live. Yeah. We are live. Welcome. And we're live. live. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> welcome. Welcome, everybody, to Blackwater D&D, the only D&D show that loves you for you and oh, yeah. not who you think you should be loved for. We, well, we asked the rest of them, and it turned out we are the only ones. <laughs> We're we the only them. ones. We asked. All of them. Uh, We're the we only ones who really love you. you, and you can never leave us. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, we did like a circle around to the back. Oh, right here now. Circle through the back. If, if anybody thinks if anybody thinks of Blackwater D and D, that's what I want you to think of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, please. No one will love you like us. You'll, you think you can do better than us? Cody, let's roll that clip. Let's let's, let's, let's roll, roll that clip. That. Help! Help! <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding. We we love you like an adequate amount, whatever. What, yeah, the like amount a safe, that you feel boundaried that amount. We love you in a safe way, way and much. if you want to love other people, that's fine. Awesome. We're fine. super. Don't happy put for words you. in my Just mouth. Just love us the most, please. <laughs> love us and only us. There's... Okay. <laughs> okay. No, I don't like this bit anymore. No, Someone it's a bad. Bit. We ruined yeah, it. We ruined it. I told you. Yeah. No, we're no, no, in the no, no. Place. The bit was bad to begin with, and I was like, <laughs> yes. I can. Fi- here's here's the danger of digging for gold in a bit. Sometimes, if you commit to a bit, you're like, oh, I'm digging through mud. Oh, and I'm I'm turning this mud into straw, and that straw then into gold. It's a it's an extended process. But sometimes you're just digging in mud, and you're like, oh, now I'm all dirty and gooey, and that's just not ideal. And so I feel like I've gotten me and all my dearest friends gooey and that's when i wake up in the morning that's not what i aim to do i don't wake up and say today's a gooey day cody can I, you roll that intro please i aim to be dry I aim roll to be the dry. intro oh, that yeah. 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 Go on. like uh, like baby powder you know we'll come like back that's... from the clip from the clip he'll still be talking about it <laughs> doom ba da doom yeah 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 when you're stuck in quarantine and there's nothing on TV, come on down, come on down, come and see Blackwater D and D. Oh. Tim, you can't double count it. That's not oh, okay. I love double counting. <laughs> my favorite. Uh, you guys, we're back. you guys have no idea. We're sure, we're back. We say to Cody while you guys are gone. I don't know about They're you. They're all but... lovely. They're all they great because we love Cody very much, it's and he has the just power Cody. to turn this stream around right now. Cody, you're like Cody. Cody just <laughs> what if what if one day we were being so rambunctious in the beginning of the stream that Cody just ended stream, ended stream. told us the <laughs> intro was running, then Whoa. told us that we were back, never put us back online, <laughs> and just never told us. I'll do it one day. Just, be, just like that's well, enough internet for everyone today. That's, you've been banned from the internet by turn, Cody. Alternatively, Cody runs the whole stream. It's just Cody. It's uh, just he's Cody. grounded us, and we can't participate. I'm okay with that. I'm okay only with that. Cody. Um, only Keep Cody all the time. Cody. Cody water. <laughs> okay, Cody water. Um, so I'm gonna dive into announcements here before we really dig ourselves into the ground. Uh, a big thank you to our sponsors, Legend Craft, a nerdy woodworking company from Calgary, and Silverwing Armory, selling paper products for all your RPG needs. Check them out, and if something tickles your fancy, enter the code Blackwater at checkout for a discount. Love, as always, to our dice goddess, Keisha. Check her out at fairydragon underscore dice. Her commissions will be open soon. If they're not open already, she has some spots available, and she makes the most beautiful dice ever. If you want to see some... uh, uh, in, uh, examples of her dice, head on over to our Instagram and head on over to her Instagram as well and DM her for all your clickety clackety needs. Our campaign artist for this campaign and beyond is the amazing Tiana Kovacevic. And you can find her at miss.marston on Instagram. All of our official art is done by her and you should get art done by her too. Her commissions are open. She has a couple spots every month, so get in there before they're gone. And then you'll have to wait some time because she's an amazing artist and works very, very, very hard at the job that she does and is like a super talented animator with a big company because she's amazing. Our Discord is a lovely, amazing place. Type exclamation point Discord in the chat to find the link and come hang out. But while we're streaming, hang out here because that's where all the cool kids are. And then come hang out with us afterwards because we're always around in there. A big thank you to those of you who subscribe to us. Don't forget to re-up your subscriptions every month as they don't roll over. Oh my god, I lost my place. We also have a coffee. If you'd like to support our show above and beyond a subscription type exclamation point donate in the chat to head over there. 
Um, Mike, we're also just really thankful to uh, have you um, showing up here every week. We love you in a safe and consensual and boundaried way. Um, whatever works for I'll you. <laughs> Not so respectful. Just not coming Sean. in there like, what? The rest <laughs> of us. <laughs> just don't listen to Sean. What no. happened? Cody, can we mute Sean? <laughs> Cody, can you roll that clip? No, I'm just sorry. I'm so sorry, Cody. Um, <laughs> it's truly wonderful and great. And we're really, really grateful for all of y'all out there. You know what else I'm grateful for? Lore Club. Um, do you want to get involved in chronicling the history of our campaign from the very beginning? I bet you do. So you should type exclamation point lore in the chat and hang out with our amazing mod, the New Experience Network, because he set up an unbelievable community lore project. We also have a lore section on our Discord. If you are want to be part of Lore Club, you can be part of the Lore Elves on the Shelves chat, uh, which is a personal favorite <laughs> of mine. So please come hang out with us so we can talk all the edits we've made to the lore document because that's what we do there. Um, before I jump into our programming for this week, I'm going to quickly talk about the what we did last week. The Wagadu stream was on Wednesday, March 24th, and it will be up on our Twitch here for two weeks. It was an amazing show. I had such a good time. Mo's myself, and TJ Storm, B. Dave Walters, Alicia Marie, and Brianna DeCosta of Utahime Cosplay, GM'd by the amazing Alan Cudicio of the Wagadu Chronicles. And if you don't know what Wagadu is, please go check it out. It's an Afrocentric fantasy setting for 5th edition. Uh, they're also coming out with a massive multiplayer online RPG game. It's going to be uh, it's gonna be so beautiful. So go check them out on Twitter, Instagram, all that kind of stuff, and go watch the stream. It'll be up there for two weeks. So uh, it was a delight to play in and so fun. I think the entire cast was in the chat okay. at one point. <laughs> At the okay. end, uh, it was really, really good. Um, Len, what are you up to this week for streaming? Uh, I stream video games mediocrely now, and uh, I'm streaming tomorrow at some point. Don't know what time, but sometime tomorrow I'll be online, and then I'll be online on Monday and Thursday. What Amazing. a nice hug you're getting from Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you go and subscribe to oh, Len's God. channel, you can get emotes of them and Mish, uh, yeah. which are delightful. They're beautiful emotes. Um, who's the artist that did your emotes, Len? Oh, off the top of my noggin. Um, mm -hmm. Give, I got it. I have it. Just, it's here. It's, I got mm. it. It's loading. While you're looking for that, Lennon, can I share Crystal rubrics. Oh. Crystal rubrics. I can just so go I'll, hit them up. I'll go put I, it in. I, I want to share something with the squad. Um, I've been trying to take notes. Uh, I'm trying to grow as a person and as a player. And just to show you how that's going, I just misspelt the date 2020 <laughs> about three times in a row. Because, okay, because I went March 27th, 2021. Oh no. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> 2021 there i forgot is. that is kind that... of how this year feels though <laughs> i was just like how did how did i fuck that up okay i got this 20 no. i think it was because last march was i think 12 years long that's how long last yeah. march was yeah. exactly because um, 20 is last two week. zero and 21 is two one that's fucked up it should be two zero one. i fuck up two zero and two one all the time okay for our last little bit of announcements bullshit programming letters this week, that's numbers that's numbers um what i'm saying is numbers are bullshit letters that's they're true. letters who are afraid to be part of the main canon <laughs> Monday we are back for chat water and it's going to be myself and Sean and Yanis and we are going to be uh we to toss up at this point we're going to see what we're going to do I might come prepared with some RPG theory or we may start diving into the Feywild Sean got excited about RPG theory so maybe you know, we'll do that um or maybe we're going to start diving into the Feywild arc which is the very last arc that we have before y'all are completely caught up and all of the history of this campaign is that not thus officially online what are we going to do once it's all officially online I don't know. You're just going to have to come hang out with us to go see when we really well and truly get there. Because we will get there at some point um, with, you know, all derailings and tangents aside. Uh, next week is our Wednesday is it our Wednesday off? I think it is. Well, it's an extra Wednesday. March had a lot of Wednesdays. So we take so the first one. Uh, we do stuff on the second, third, and fourth Wednesdays. And then usually are off if there's an extra Wednesday. So we're off next Wednesday. Um, but go check out uh, 
Lendstream if they're streaming on that day because they will be. Yeah, go check out Lendstream that day. We'll be hosting them as well as some other good D&D content out there with all of our friends, especially over at We D&D &D, um, at Art Hard Studios and our friends at Fabled 42. Mm -hmm. Please go hang out with these wonderful, wonderful folks. They do really good stuff in the D&D community and we're very grateful to be friends with them. Other than that, if this is your first time joining us or you've been with us for ages, thank you so much for the support. We love you immensely and thank you so much for hanging out at our table. We hope you feel really, really welcome here. Now let's play some friggin' Dungeons and Dragons. Tim. So for those of you just joining us tonight, last week Blackwater began their exploration of the city of Sigil. Coming across a bustling market, they met the potion-selling goblin Ubi as well as a crystal merchant, a petch named Lady Forna, who took an interest in Clack and agreed to guide them through the city. She informed them of the primary portals, and the party decided to see if they could track down the plain scribe, Orika Sarad, by getting information from the Elemental Defense Society, where a helpful Arakakra named Benton gave them directions to Orika's home. It was there they discovered something had gone awry with a recent spell, and following the clues, the party went to the Plain of Ooze, where after dealing with an elder Ublek, they managed to rescue Orika and bring her back to her home, where you arrive and she ushers you into her portal that she's just opened. As you all step through, you arrive in a beautiful musical uh, music hall uh, you can see there is a uh, a large table kind of set in the center um, with drinks and mountains of food. Uh, you can see there looks to be kind of a ghostly figure in the corner on a stage playing the fiddle. Um, and there is a roaring hearth off to the left-hand side. And you can see there is another uh, set of double doors on the far side. She kind of, um, please have a seat. Um, I, I don't know if you have somewhere to be, but you're welcome to have dinner with me if you'd like. It's the least I could do. Yeah. No, I, I don't think we have anywhere else to be. I mean, technically speaking, Eventually. we are we are trying to get to the Shadowfell, uh, which is uh, why we were trying to find you and you know followed you to the ooze. But while that is time sensitive, it's not. We got to go right now. You know, lunch would be dinner. Would be, what a place! Look at this. That, that, that guy plays the violin. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's I. I try to mix it up every time. Would we recognize this as a mansion spell? Uh, yeah. You would. You would recognize just by virtue of the of the music player. You can see that uh, he is somewhat ghostly, like um, Cody and Yanis <clears throat> in Yana's mansion. And she would have like cast it the same way, like a little. Yeah, miniature she, doorway. Yeah, it wasn't like the the doorway appeared in that kind of a wooden arch that she had in her home. Um, right. But you can see she played it through a uh, a flute. She used a flute to oh. cast. Cool. So, um, the uh, Shadowfell. I, I have been there, um, but uh, it, it was the I was granted access by the banded Sombra, but they forbade me from bringing back a totem. So I, I can't get there myself easily. What's your interest in the Shadowfell? Well, me? yeah, darling. I'm, I'm assuming that we're sitting and having dinner at this point. Yeah, yeah you've kind of come over. Um, there is a woman who has stolen a piece of my god. Oh, and she is residing in the shadow fell. Really? Um, wow. We are going to get it back. I see. Um, interesting. Well, uh, you, have, I assume none of you have been to the shadow fell before. No, mm. the only information we have is that she is at the gloom spire beyond the dread mountains. I know the dread, the dread range. Yes, that yes. Yeah, I um, I'm familiar with that somewhat. I, I I know where it is. I haven't been there myself, but I d don't know anything about the gloom spire. I can take you um, to the banded sombra. They might have some more information. I can't guarantee that they'll let you pass through the portal, but I can put in a good word. What did you have to do to let them 
let you pass through the portal. Uh, I had to um, run an errand for them. I had to prove my worth. So I had to go track down a, a, a rare violet in the Feywild. The Shadowfell folks wanted stuff from the Feywild. I thought they were uh, a little incompatible. Uh, from the Shadow Court. Um, they, the elves of the Shadow Court, their descendants went on to uh, migrate. Some of them migrated to the Shadowfell became the Shadar Kai. There is a difficult relationship, but they desired to get an umbral violets and they didn't want to go themselves. So I went for them. Right. Um... We, we came to you obviously hoping that you would have an easy way for us to get there, but I understand. I appreciate the help. Is there anything else that you can tell us about the Shadowfell that, that would help us? Well, I, the Shadowfell is similar to the Feywild in a lot of ways. They're sister planes. They act almost in opposite to each other. Um, so portals to the Shadowfell exist on the material plane. Places where the planes are thin. Similar to the Feywilds, they're very close with the material plane from my research. So planes, uh, openings to the Shadowfell can be found all over the material plane. You just have to look in the right places. Do you know where the right places are? Dark corners, crypts, things like that. Do you know but one specifically? I don't. I went oh. through the primary portal, but it's the kind of thing that generally it's accompanied with ghost stories, things of that nature. So if we find somewhere that is dark and ghosty, we are likely to end up. It could even be in a, a town, some crypts underneath towns or a local graveyard it could be anywhere. It seems like you're looking for a needle in a haystack or a, a pebble in the sandstorm. Or I can introduce you to some of the planar docents. What is, what is, what is that? They are who Lady Fauna mentioned. They work on the outer rim. Um, akin to almost like smugglers. Well, I mean, I feel like we talked to these monks. I mean, they sound... They're... Um... They can be difficult. They are fiercely protective of the Shadowfell. The portal that they guard over leads directly to the monastery that keeps the Tree of Death, Gloom Theran. Oh, we know all about that. Oh, they're going to love us. They're going to love us. Don't worry about it. Um, we've just recently actually come from the remnants of where Thalbask was first planted. Oh. In Manta. In, where are we? Really? Yes. That's fascinating. She kind of pulls out a book. She starts writing. It, you, you do know that the tree was attacked not that long ago. I, I know it was taken to Ishion and planted there, but that would have been... It was burned down. In fact, some of my research was around whether or not uh, the uh, lower planes would be colliding with the material plane, but that hasn't happened in a substantial way. I've heard some stories and rumors of uh, some devils and demons um, popping up here and there, but mostly just stories. I was convinced that with the, the destruction of the tree that a collision or a rift would appear, but I don't know. It, it hasn't happened, so I'm, I'm a bit unsure. Was the tree saved at all, or was it all destroyed? My sense is that some part of it may be still living. Somewhere. Are we talking about the tree of death or the tree no. of life? No, the tree of life. Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's it's a Ishion, right? That's the whole thing. It, that's what she's talking about. It got burned. Oh, they burned it again. Right. 
Oh. It was a holy site, and uh, it was attacked. God is great. Um, well, I mean, there have been some instances over the last little while of us coming into contact with the abyss, for one. My but... sense is that the planes are close, but there isn't a full-on collision. So some part of it may still be alive, most likely. But that could be the uptick in demons and devils. Right. So Gloom Theren is these these monks hold well, it's a sacred place for them. Very. They were entrusted with keeping the tree safe. Right. It's a very important Which job. They have, because that tree is still good. Yes. Uh, okay, okay, good. I just want to make sure I have... Yes, I feel like there would have been quite a stir if something had happened. Great. Then they should have no problem. Oh, Rika, what do you know about the negative energy plane? Oh, uh, well... I know a bit. I, I guess I've never been there. I don't know anyone who has or could. And, well... This may be hard to explain, but I am very interested in the movement of the planes. Um, traditional uh, depictions shows them as rings stacked on top of one another, but I believe that it's much more like a root system, intertwined and constantly moving. And I take great pleasure in finding when those planes collide. The trees... I believe Thalbask and Gloomtheran protect the material plane from some such collisions. They keep them from colliding and creating rifts. They protect the material plane, but other planes like the elemental planes shift quite a bit more and don't have that same kind of protection. So demi planes open up the plane of ooze, but the lower planes are all more chaotic in a way, and they shift a lot more. So there are more overlapping planes, places where collisions and demi-planes open up. The negative energy plane, I've only ever seen the aftermath. I haven't been able to track where it is, but I know where it's been. Where has it been? It's touched many planes, but it always leaves the same footprint life gone destruction utter death nothing survives but in my travels and stories that I've picked up I believe there are precursors to its movements there's been stories on the material plane in different towns that I visited. They often have some part of their history that they talk of where the skies turn gray, crops die. It doesn't happen all at once. It happens over time. It's slow. And then there's an incident and people go missing. Whole towns, whole communities. And then shortly after that, things get back to normal. In my experience though, these events happen sporadically through history. It's hard to pin down an exact timeline, but it doesn't happen very often with the material plane. Has it happened before? I believe so, yes. Do you remember the name of the place where it happened? I... Not recently. The last documented case that I have was a story from uh, a small fishing village in the Marinora, but it was a legend that was maybe 300 years old. I wonder if that's what happened to Telekov. I don't know if that's a jump, but... Alora's hometown? Yeah. 
I mean, will happen. Will, yes. This is this is very helpful, Erika. We are we are trying to the woman that stole um, the piece of Kokanee's god. She is determined to bring death, destruction, and vengeance upon us, those we care about, and frankly, an entire pantheon of gods. It's, it's why everything is so pressing. It's why we have to go. Because if she damages that item, that piece of Erethis, it will be our undoing. Hmm. See. Which is why we're so stoked for your uh, for you offering to uh, introduce us to um, the, them 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 shadowy monks. Of course. Um, I mean, I, I guess we can go now if, if you like. Um, would, would you, uh, I mean, you've been inside in Ublik for God knows how long. I could use a rest. And me too. Myself as well. I'm, if we were to go and visit the monks and they would say, well, go right now. I, I'm not in any form to go to the Shadowfell at the moment. Could you arrest? If that's all right with you, Orika. Of course, I, I had chambers done up. I suspected you might want to stay the night. It's just through those doors and on the right. Thank you. That's very <laughs> kind of you. Um, but yes, perhaps talking to the bonded sombra, banded or bonded? Banded. Banded sombra. Um, will be at least a place to start, and if we make no head roads there, then. Perhaps the docent. Yeah, the the docents, um, you just have to be discerning. But they have traveled extensively, most of them. I know a few who I'm sure have been to the Shadowfell. They just, it's usually a one-way ticket. Oh, that's no problem. We can ticket ourselves out anywhere. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, if it doesn't work with the, uh, the banded Sombra, then, uh, you know, I'm sure uh, uh, a reference from you to one of these uh, docents would be, would, be, would be really appreciated. They just care about money. If you get oh, we've the got, docent, it's, we it's, it's going to cost you. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> uh, Are they, I know that they tend to, to move shady stuff. Are they safe? Generally, yeah, I yeah, some of them, some of them less so. Some planar docents prey on people. They'll take advantage of them and strand them in a plane and take them for all they're worth or hold them ransom there. But I know a few of them and I have used their services in the past. So if you have a way out, then they can't, they can't really hold anything over you. They and if they try it, then we probably get to beat the shit out of them and imagine how many totems one of those is carrying. You're then we can bust right. into any plane we want to. That would be, mm -hmm. be great. Uh, cool. This sounds great. I'm feeling not the most tired, uh, but Clack, do you feel like do you feel like taking a rest or uh, do you want to hit up a particular part of town? I just want to gauge where you're at. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, I, I really think I should. I should take it easy. I am about to be tired. You want to take an early one? I think I should probably. I should probably. I should probably go to bed. It's been a long day. Should you probably go to bed, or do you want to go to bed? Letters. Yes. We should probably go to bed. Okay, we're going to bed. I look forward to sleeping next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, Erika, one last thing before bed, um, before I retire for the evening. Um, 
I'd love your opinion about this. Um, and I'd show her the chaos talisman. I can't hear you, Tim. You might need to go a bit. She's speechless. Mind. Oh man, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, weird. She goes, "Oh, this is amazing." Um, I've traveled through the elemental planes fairly extensively, and um, well, they are all connected. It's a myth that they're separate planes. They're just one giant plane in constant flux, sort of a chaotic, uh, a chaotic jumble, <laughs> if you will, and um. It looks like someone has tapped into the very essence of that plane and harnessed it. This yes. is rare. Where did you get this? Uh, well, um, a wizard who was uh, hell-bent on bringing that chaos to the material plane uh, summoned a giant creature ripping open a rift and uh, when it fell it there were some shards keeping it alive and it turned into that oh I this is amazing I the, I have heard stories rumors about people or even deities, moving planes by themselves or with powerful items such as this. There was a rumor I heard at the mall, uh, which houses the portal to Avernus, about one of the archdevils creating an engine to a drive a piece of a plane. Oh, yeah, they oh, yeah. flew the, the, the piece of... Fey wild through the hell, right? Did the I third right? level of hell, yes. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Oh yes. yeah, we were on it. It was wild. That's yeah. fascinating. I was, I was inside it at one point, I think. Yeah, Callie, you you picked up its engine like with your hands. Yeah, that was my nemesis that did that. That's you, I'm sorry, but you have to tell me about this I, before you go to bed. I would really appreciate it. I Cat water will get there. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? What are you doing this Monday about eight o'clock? <laughs> eight p.m. Material Standard Time. <laughs> I have spent a lot of my life tracking the movement of planes to try to figure out if there is any kind of rhyme or reason, and some of them seem to have a set movement pattern. Many of the upper planes seem to move in a similar way. And I don't know if that's divine or if it's just the nature of those planes to move in a more ordered way. But I have found that some planes move much more chaotically and are harder to predict. But if someone could move an entire plane or even a piece of one, the ramifications of that would be well, they could be disastrous. It almost was. We got it back, though, to the Feywild. Oh, so, Scar. So interesting. Well, thank you. I, I look forward to hearing about it. Have, have you been to the ethereal plane very much? I've never been, and I, I don't know if one... Well, I suppose you could travel there in a way. I have tried the spell, etherealness. Yeah. So I have visited in a way, mm -hmm. but I've never been able to plane shift there, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting. I'm unsure how the ethereal plane fits in, whether it's even a plane at all. It seems to run under everything. You can 
travel to the ethereal plane in any plane. Maybe, maybe it's like the, the roots you were talking about. That's brilliant. <laughs> You're right. That's, that's how I see it when I, when I see it, I, I, I can kind of see the, the roots or the web or whatever. They you can I, see the ethereal plane? A little bit. It's, it's really new. I don't really... I, I'm working on it. That is incredible. That makes perfect sense. It's the glue. It's the binding that weaves it, all the planes together. It connects it. Huh. Wow. If you wouldn't mind, I'd love to chat with you further. Yes, please. <laughs> when, when I look at, at her, Tim, like, do I see where she's connected to? Yeah, you can see she is uh, She is connected wholly to this place. Yeah. But you can also see threads uh, kind of emanating out from her, like, just mm -hmm. out in and beyond this, this room. You're not exactly sure where they go, um, but you can tell that she has a lot of connections. Yeah. I got pretty beat up today, so I should probably sleep, but we can talk over breakfast. I would love that. Well, thank you all again for saving my life. I, uh, I feel very fortunate. Uh, I'll be up for a bit, but you're welcome to uh, retire anytime you like. If, um, if you still find your, I'm sorry, if you find your memory still foggy, in the morning, let me know. Um, I think I can fix it. I will. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Would I be able to stay up a little bit and tell mm -hmm. her about the Feywild and the Absolutely. That chunk and yeah. She is just hanging off your every word, and you can see she's writing it down in um, like a beautiful kind of leather bound diary. Um, and she's just writing it all down, taking it all in. And you well, all. I want to stay up and hang out. You know, cool. Until she goes yeah. to bed. Sounds good. So yeah, um, you spend a bit of time. You watch the the fiddle player kind of rotates through a, a number of different songs, and uh, it's quite beautiful. Um, but as the night winds down, you all uh, head to bed um, and take your yeah. I would like to just before if anyone else has anything like that, like to do a bit today. But after Callie, you know, says their whole speech to uh, to. Uh, to our host, uh, I'd just love to like intercept them on their way to bed. That classic thing, leaning up against the door and as I exit, <laughs> yeah. sort of keep pace. Uh, hey, Kelly, uh, you got a minute? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Cool. It? Oh, no, just good job recounting the story. That was a real vivid, uh, it was like I was there again. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, I just uh, I've just been meaning to um uh to to thank you uh for I guess being a good coach um back with the uh with the matron um uh clack was in trouble and I was I I just did what you told me to do um and I got him back so uh thank you uh, for that uh, how does, if you don't mind me asking, how does that make you feel doing something like that? Well, I'll be honest, I never put uh, much faith in the, uh, uh, in the powers of love. I found it to be a pretty uh, uh, um, ephemeral motivator in terms of getting stuff done. But uh, this has kind of changed my mind about it. It seems to be a, a lot more rock solid than I thought. Uh, and uh, to be honest, I didn't think I had it in me um, when you described that phenomenon. Uh, uh, so I, I guess I feel uh, kind of good, to be honest. I'm glad you were able to find it. 
I think it's something I've always seen in you. So. Well, 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 I just, just wanted to say thank you. And, and uh, yeah. Um, hey, you know what? There is uh, one other thing sort of off topic, yeah. but I, I also feel like, I feel like, you know, you're married to Cal, uh, fucking Kamea. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, but I also, I also feel like you strike me of, of, of anyone in our married band, uh, I don't feel like there's a lot of people I can talk to about uh, like uh, matters of the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? Uh, and I feel like you're, you're a student of the world. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, how do I navigate this situation? So I think someone likes me in a romantic capacity and i don't feel that way about them yeah. uh but i do want to hang out with them how do i tell them without being rude that them like i find their physiology kind of gross the fact that they have like little hands for hooves really <laughs> kind of upsets me and like, I know you do, like you have that and, and like, that's fine. I just, I, I've just never had to like really come up because, because most of the time someone's like, Hey, flirty, flirty. I'm just like, nah, but I actually want to hang out with this person. But under, you know, cause here's the thing back home. It's like, everyone is fair game. I've never had a thing where it's like, I like you as a brain, but I don't like what you're in, like what your brain is housed in. Yeah. Well, I was with you. I was with you along to that point, uh, don't tell them they're gross. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm coming. This is, but you know, this is between us. Yeah, just between us. Don't tell them they're gross. That would be the rude part, I feel like. But I think if you were to just have a conversation and be like, hey, I have, I've been picking up on these things you've been saying. Uh, I think you're really cool, but I don't have those feelings towards you, but I really want to hang out with you. I hope that's okay. We can continue up friendship well here's the thing it's like this is why it's confusing for me it's like right. i don't think i have feelings for physical you yeah. you know what i mean like big brain energy weird hands for hooves energy mm. and like mm. like that's a right I, cause I've never had, it. I, I've had, it's like, ah, uh, you know, this is a professional relationship. Let's keep professional. This is, this is, this is, have you ever had that? No. Like, I don't know, I guess for you to be like, man, that's one, uh, really charming seal, but too bad they're that or something. I don't know <laughs> how it works for you people. I don't know what the equivalent would be. <laughs> seal like a seal yeah well i understand that like like some of your people like when they were on ships they like after a while they'd be like they'd see like seals or things things like them and be like oh man i sure would like to have sex with that and that's where like the first <laughs> mermaids came from so i understand that your people kind of like historically have been open to seals but just not like as a whole population but they're having like edge cases <laughs> is that rude for me to say like is that like too did that get like is that too real like because look if you have had things for seals i don't want to judge this is the thing we're on the same page here if you're oh that must be really complicated for you because you're also married and you having feelings for seals like uh i don't i haven't had feelings for seals um but uh I don't, yeah, I don't know if I, uh, I guess I don't know if I relate to what you're saying. Uh, I've, if we're, I've dated many people in this world who have said not. <laughs> um, but uh, I think you'd have to weigh if the hands are too much well it's also you're just like you're kind of like naked mole rats just kind of all over which is weird as well like look the hooves is like the number one thing yeah. but like 
the fact that you like sunburn is absurd to me. It's like, oh, I guess we'll like we'll hide from the sun during the day, despite the fact we're diurnal animals. That's like I don't know what the gods were thinking when they made you know you and like like coconut and stuff. Me? It's well, yeah. I mean, you're more. I don't know. You're I. I don't actually know what you are because you've got wings. Is that rude too? I, I feel like we haven't. A, I'm, maybe we. I'm an I'm an ASMR. Okay. Is that like similar from Cinderfall or? Um, I'm part angel. In the broadest of terms. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, angels look like you. Some. I okay. Guess. I've never. All right. I wouldn't have called that. I've only met one. I think one. Oh, okay. Right, Jim? Huh? I've only met one. I think so. Yep. I've only met one. Huh. I, I think you've only met Adonis. <laughs> Adonis, and then I met. I can't think. Ram. Of Ram. Ram, Ram, yes, Ram was an angel. Adonis is an angel, but All right, then forgive me. Everything I said about your people, I mean Kokanee's people. Well, El, most like the humanoids, which I guess you are. It's complicated. It is. Okay. Point is, it's not just the hooves. It's a whole thing. It's like the whole bag is like, you know, like we can oh, hang like out, but let's let's not get let's not get too close. Thing. Yeah. Right. Mm. Like, you get it. Like, you must look in the mirror sometimes. You're like, skin everywhere. And, like, you can pull on it. I've seen you do that. Like, when a bunch of you get together, you just, like, you find this part hilarious. And I love that. And I don't want to take that away from you. But you have to admit it's weird that you are shaped that way, right? (laughs) It's weird that I'm shaped the way that I am? Yeah, like on, like, a, like, on a functional, like... Uh, you know, I feel uh, uh, I, uh, I, I think you've given me a lot to think about and I feel like I'm digging myself a hole. Uh, so I just want to say thank you for your candor and thank you for, uh, you know, empowering me to uh, uh, save a very good friend of mine. Of course. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm going to backpedal uh, out of here. Letters, by the way, just before you go. Yeah. Watch out for that pit behind you. And I'm gonna turn around. Uh, just go into my room. The hole that you've dug yourself. <laughs> oh, that's you. You scared me up because someone was actually trying to get me in a pit. I'd be re- that's that that's a real declaration. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> all right. You have a good night. You too, letters. I'm gonna probably stay awake and think about this and regret it. Uh, this conversation for a little while. <laughs> All right, <laughs> later. All right. Oh man! <laughs> so after that, I can't even call Kamea. <laughs> Tell her about that. And uh, you all have a long rest. You come to in the morning, um, and there is more food laid out on the table. And uh, you can see Ulrika is there having a cup of coffee, um, and having a bit of food. What would you like to do? I would have woken up early to have coffee and chat with her. Definitely. I'll go hang out. Mm-hmm. Um, so once everyone's here, I, I can take you over um, over to the Bandit Sombra. That sounds fine. That sounds like probably the best place to start, if anywhere. All right. Um, how are you feeling this morning? Better. Better. I think um, the memory loss was temporary. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Good. Thank um, you. You're welcome. Um, have you been to all of the demiplanes of the elemental realms? Uh, not all, um, but some. Uh, the trick with the demiplanes um, is I have to wait until there's a collision for some of the planes to open up. Um, the plane of ooze uh, 
overlaps with the abyss. Uh, right. But it collides fairly often, so it's more accessible. But some I have not been able to. And some I have to do a bit more preparation. The, the plane of steam um, can yes. be quite dangerous, I'm told. And uh, I have been to uh, the plane of dust, and um, I have tried to get into the plane of ash, uh, but I missed my window. Um, and some of it is the plane of ooze. I used some ooze um, from a, I got my hands on an ooze and used it as the totem to get there. Some are harder to find totems for. Right. Sometimes you can risk it with a proxy I found, um, but it doesn't always end well. Well, I mean, hey, if you if we if you need to scoot back to the plane of ooze, our uh, talisman ooze is one of the places it goes. Uh, you know, if we have some time off, which is a really? big if. Believe me, you me. Oh we yeah, can, we can get to any of the elemental planes or any of the demi planes by using oh. this. Wow, that is a very handy thing. Ah, oh, wow. Are, um, are there any other planes you haven't been to? I haven't been to the plane of ice. Um, Oh, that one's kind of locked down. It's gone. It's it's like closed for business. Oh, yeah. Under new management. Yeah. Interesting. That makes a lot of sense. I have traveled to a few of the upper planes. Um, I persuaded the Modrons to take me to the plane of order. Um, but a lot of them are locked off as well. Uh, so that... Why is the plane of ice locked off? What's the plane of order like? <laughs> plane of order? Yeah. Oh, it's very regimented. Is it um, really boring? No, well, the kind of. Okay. It's fascinating, and it you is. You can say it. <laughs> well, it, there's a lot to take in when you first go. The Mo the Modrons are uh, a lot, um, and it is fascinating. But everything is very precise, and we had to stay on a very strict schedule. So it's not the nicest place to visit. Um, right. And I, uh, I sort of upset one of them, oh. and um, I had to escape, if that makes sense. Oh, what did mm -hmm. you do? Well, uh, a duo drone wouldn't leave me alone and um, didn't like how I organized my diary. Um, <laughs> uh, tried to take it from me. And so I had to um, put him in his place. Did you kill it? Not quite. But hmm. um, after I was done with him, he was no See, longer. See, in your diary? Uh, no. When you I was tell me. <laughs> done with him, he was no longer a duo drone. Um, he was a mono drone again. Oh. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to get along very well. <laughs> Generally, I don't like to leave a footprint when I go to these places. I try to blend in. Um, unless it's a place that has more civilization, then I like to blend in with the locals and try to learn as much as I can. Uh, some places have civilizations, some places don't. So it really depends. The Modrons were kind of an exception. They have a civilization, but they're not. It's not a place you want to visit. Understood. Mm -hmm. Right. Shall we? <laughs> Let's. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So she leads you out um, to her gate, and you watch as she pulls out a, a key that's kind of glowing with um, runes on it as she turns the key to the gate. Um, and you can see the, the, the runes kind of illuminate around uh, the keyhole. Uh, as she does it, and she kind of opens it up. Um, she ushers you through, and then she locks it again. You see the runes kind of flare up around the keyhole. Um, and then she leads you through the city uh, over to where the um, there is the, the large stone square building, uh, which you can see on the top has like an inverted dome um, that has been carved to look like wooden branches, almost like a bird's nest. Um, and there is large double doors 
at the front, and you can see uh, there is a patrol, pardon me, of Shadar Kai kind of moving around the outside, and then there's guards posted at the front as well. And you can see their armor is a series of iron bands um, all across their body. Um, it's uh, like you can see it, it allows for maximum movement and protection as well. Um, and each of the bands is carved. Uh, it looks like uniquely to each monk. Um, and you can see the two at the front kind of holds um, like ornate wooden spears. If that's a nest, is there, and I'm putting association to bird, um, is there any Raven Queen iconography anywhere? Um, make a perception check. I elbow letters in Kokanee and whisper, Mage Armor. Oh, oh, we for sure, Len and Callie got the Simba in the morning. 27. Uh, yeah, you see, um, it's not terribly um, uh, obvious, but you can see on the armor as you kind of come up by the guards, you notice that uh, on all of them, um, near the center kind of band that they wear around their chest, um, there does look to be the symbol of the Raven Queen um, kind of carved into the into the iron. And most, like, they're all kind of over, kind of just off center. Uh, I'm going to, as we approach, before we get too close, I'm going to, I'm going to tuck my, my holy symbol okay. of Nephthysiket just inside my robes. Okay. I, I mean, I know my robes have some iconography on them that I can't change, but I'm going to just tuck the, like, you know, big ostentatious holy symbol away. <laughs> You can see, um, just turn the light off of it that's flashing <laughs> yeah the neon the light sign that's off going of <laughs> that says i worship net this again i'm gonna turn that that's what the back of your robes say yeah you yeah, can't yeah turn yeah. that off that's flashing still the one that says mommy's favorite on the back yeah <laughs> turn that off. um you also see that they are all they all look to be shadar kai so they are kind of gray skinned elves um you can see with like strong elven features um some of them are bald some of them have kind of uh like gray white hair um some of them have jet black hair um but you can see yeah they they all appear to be shadar kai as we approach um i'm gonna cast tongues on myself okay um like so just as... like a little bit before we get there so that yeah. i can understand other speech i'm gonna cast tongues on myself um as you kind of come up uh you see Eureka. i'll um I'll ask if we can see a dreamer. She's the elder monk. Just give me a second. And you see she walks over to one of the guards. Um, and they kind of look down at her and she speaks Elvish to them. Um, and they respond. And they kind of like nod and they both push the large doors open. Um, and you can see inside um, black stone pillars line a large... Uh, training grounds in the center um, and the pillars have been carved to look like trees um, and you can see there are probably 40 monks um, all training uh, in sparring and, and um, kind of running through various regiments um, all throughout the grounds um, of the interior of the of the chamber and you can see there's another set of large iron doors on the far side um, and you see one of the guards kind of whistle and one of the monks comes over, um, kind of whispers something to him and he kind of runs to the back door uh, as Arika kind of looks at all of you. Uh, I think I think she'll see us so we can all go in. One, it, just before we go in too deep to maybe a point of no return, a little bit of uh, housekeeping. Was there any chance with our time with Arika Sarad uh, that... Uh, Letters could possibly have seen some symbols to denote the upper or lower planes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. She, yeah, she would have given you uh, symbols for the lower planes. Great. I'm going to take out a big old gem and ask uh, Clack to carve that into uh, oh, one of buddy. my gems. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing it while you walk. It's very impressive. <laughs> Our boy. Um, Beauty. Big boy. And so you step inside um, and you watch the, the monks close the, the doors behind you. Um, 
as uh, as you're kind of standing there. Um, you watch as the far doors open. All of the monks immediately stop what they're doing and line up on either side of the training grounds between the pillars. Um, as you watch uh, a robed monk kind of step down um, and you can see the like the the large kind of gr dark gray robe kind of um, is actually a, a cloak that kind of uh, falls up behind them and you can see his clasp with um, a raven skull and you can see they're wearing that similar armor but their armor is very ornate carved like you could see on on the bands of the of the guards and things like that there was maybe you know kind of dotted throughout theirs is in like every inch of the iron is carved um you can see uh the woman kind of comes down and she has a uh like uh, a tight sort of white gray top knot um and she's holding a black staff in her hand as she strides across the training grounds there's total silence as she moves um and she kind of steps up towards you and she gets about 10 feet from you and kind of looks why are you here and Arika's like um thank you for agreeing to see us Adrima um this is Blackwater uh and they would like to use the primary portal um, she kind of looks over and Adrima kind of steps forward. And why should I let all of you through the portal to the Shadowfell? Well? Letters looks at Kokony and Nepi and like is this all in common? Are we? You were saying it was. She's Elvish? now speaking in common. She okay. was speaking in Elvish to Arika, and then she she switches to common. Right. Thank you for seeing us. Um, we are very appreciative of your time. We seek to use the primary portal to travel to the Shadowfell, to the Gloom Spire. Her eyes kind of narrow a bit. And what is your business at the Gloom Spire? A very important object for us was taken. And we have heard and figured out that that is where it is now. And we aim to get it back. You'll forgive me, but how do you expect to travel to the Gloom Spire? Perhaps you'll forgive our naivety. We know nothing of the Shadowfell, or where it is, or how to get there. We are seeking information and assistance. There is only an account of one monk who has ever even seen the Gloom Spire. It was found with their remains a picture and a name. So you'll forgive me if I do not believe that you all won't die. Well, we possess powerful magic. We have gotten ourselves through very difficult situations. And if in the event of an emergency, we do have the ability to get ourselves out. We just simply cannot get there. What is it the gloom spire that you seek? I'd look to Kokini. It's a relic of my god. Who is I your am, god? I am a priest of Arathus. He's modest. He's the high priest of Arathus. <laughs> and how did your relic end up there? It was taken from me. Who took it? Um, it 
Emma, I forgot their name. <laughs> Cordelia, Captain, uh, uh, Cordelia Shade. Uh, their name was Cordelia Shade. We did not know where they had gone, but through information, we have found that that is where the location of this relic is. And who is this Cordelia Shade to you? I'm not sure. She she is somebody who is very upset with us. How um, did she get to the Shadowfell? I do not know. No idea. And you believe she's taken up residence at the Gloom Spire? That yes. is what we've come to believe. Why? We do not know. Well, this is we, unhelpful. You are right. We unfortunately don't know anywhere near as much as we would like about the situation. Why did she steal this thing from you? I think ultimately she is deeply upset at us and is on a path of trying to hurt us. I see. Do you know anything of Gloom Theran? Yes. A bit, yes. The portal here will take you to a monastery that tends to Gloom Theran. If I were to let you through that portal, perhaps you make it to this Cordelia Shade. Perhaps you get your item back. But what's to say she doesn't follow you? What's to say she doesn't discover Gloom Theran and destroy it? Those are... Those are very understandable concerns. She must be very powerful if she is at the Gloom Spire. We... We have the ability to cross planes ourselves. If we had access to a totem we could cross and never know where the tree is. Uh, but what's to stop you from traveling to the Shadowfell anytime you like? How does I to... Please forgive me. Um... I know the power of the trees and I hold them in the highest reverence. Very much so. I have no reason and not, nor do any of us to see any harm come to either tree. I recently just heard of the attacks on Thalbask. Yes. Troubling. Very. But the tree lives. It is safe for now. Good. There is something you are not telling me. The amulet that you wear. The raven skull. Yes. Where did you get that? found it in a tomb. Whose tomb? The tomb of the Raven Queen. Hmm. I have no reason to lie to you. I know. But you have not been telling me the whole truth. What would you like to know? 
Who is Cordelia Shade? I feel like we, we can just kind of come clean here, right? I'm I mean, not, I'm not totally sure of what her title is, but noticing the iconography of this temple and your armor and the acolytes here, I can imagine you are aware of the, the Raven Queen's shift. Yes. Something has changed, but our relationship to her has not. Well, I mean, are you a big fan of vengeance? Because she is now. We understand that she's been reaching out to some of her former followers and getting them on the vengeance train. Is, is that attractive to you? Not followers. Oh. The Shadar Kai made a pact with the Raven Queen many thousands of years ago to protect the tree. Oh, well, if, if that's your only relationship, then we're not in, at odds at all. Uh, 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 Cordelia Shade um, is... Uh, the Paladin? Not say we think... If, uh, can I... Please ask a question. Um, the tree, the pact you made to protect the tree. Why, why did you make that pact? Because it was our duty. And in turn, she gave us a safe haven in the shadow fell. And we vowed to protect her tree evermore. So, the Raven Queen, the tree held importance to the Raven Queen. At one time, yes. Okay. Her domain was the Shadowfell. It is where she took residence. But she has not resided there for some time. Well, well... She has uh, adopted the, uh, the, the, the Matron of Vengeance as her new epithet. And uh, Cordelia Shade is a big fan of vengeance. And, uh, and so uh, I guess you could say that Cordelia Shade is a paladin of vengeance. Uh, we, did a we did business with Cordelia. She blames us for it going south. I personally believe it's to her substandard captainism, but uh, but she's angry and wants vengeance on us, and she found the matron. And like uh, my associate here, Kokanee, said, is trying to hurt us, and the best way to hurt Kokanee is to uh, hurt a piece of his god, who's like his second favorite lady. Well, we hold no loyalty to the matron of vengeance. Our pact is only with the Raven Queen or any shred of the Raven Queen that still lives. I will need time to think of this. I'll have one of you make a persuasion check for me, for the group. Any of us? Talk to you. I can, or I mean, Callie I'm can. Pretty, I'm pretty persuasive. Yeah. I don't know if I'm more make persuasive. your kind of final plea. Uh, I'm. I'm probably. I don't know if you're probably more persuasive than I am. You're more charismatic than me. So you can make your final plea and then make your persuasion check. Uh, okay. <laughs> um. Just while you're. Considering, um, it may not mean much, but um, I am a woman of my word, and I know my group is too, and we know what it's like to protect and have a pact that you cannot go back on. Um, we've just experienced that. So 
we would never do anything to hurt the tree or go back without your permission. All right, make your persuasion check. Funk, okay. Maybe I should be back here. You got it, Callie. Are my dice back there? Where are my dice? <laughs> It's a fun game. <laughs> Welcome to Blackwater D&D. We're not we sure don't, where our dice are. We don't roll them. It should be. I never seen I never seen dice. I'm, what? I've oh. never seen a die. Oh, they're on the <laughs> floor. Never seen I, a found die. I found them. I found them. They were just under this pile did you, of things. Did your little one dump them again? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I hid them. So, <laughs> so, she would not, so she would not. Both from little one and from Mish. Okay. That is cocked. Oh. Um. It's twenty-five. Oh shit! I will need some time to meditate on this. You may return. Hmm. And looks over four hours, and I will have my decision made. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mish, for the what, did she, what did she look at? Uh, you're not sure. She looked into in, uh, into the walls, but the like the walls are fairly dark. So it's with your vision, you didn't see what was on the wall. Do you want to scope up to see where she was looking? That might sound <laughs> wrong. Where is she, where she looking? <laughs> Thank you for your time. Please. I appreciate it. We would make a, uh, 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 oh my God, reverent retreat. <laughs> we would leave okay. in the most oh, reverent step way. Step two, three, right. bow. <laughs> she, to, she just turns and, and heads back towards the back chamber. Um, and you can see as she like as she heads out, people start resuming their training once she enters that that back door. Um, so you head back out the front. Rubika kind of like, oh, that went pretty well, I think. That yeah. that was well. Yeah, yeah. She she doesn't give a lot. She's um, right. Yeah, she's a bit. Um, well, you get it. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't. She's not a people person. Right. Is. Talking to them, I felt we were kind of embarrassingly unawares of the shadow fell. Uh, who could we talk to about, say, the realities of traveling through the shadow fell? Uh, you I know. mean, I, I can tell you a bit about it. Um, oh, okay. Anything you're willing to share, Rika, would be helpful. Uh, yeah, the, the monastery. Shall, that shall we talk it over a drink? We've got four hours, and I am yes. dying to hit up that hell bar. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> you won't. Okay, you want to go to the ma? Sure. Anybody? Or, I mean. Yeah, yeah, let's go to the ma. Yeah. <laughs> Hellbar? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's run by devils. Yeah, there's a literal bar to hell. Cal, I feel like it's really up your street. I feel like they would feel a celestial presence a second Kelly walked in the room. And what is are it? they going to do about us? We'll fucking <laughs> throw them right in the hole. Wait, That's this true. is a bar with a hole with a, a pit to hell right in the center. Um, yeah, the portal is in the center of the room. That um, is Tim, perfect. Tim, <laughs> Tim, how what? do I? How do I feel? How does Callie feel about? How do you I feel do. about it? Oh, Arika, is this like a no celestial bar? Uh no. Anyone can go into the bar. Um, just but can uh, anyone come out? <laughs> the way you said that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really specific. I'll just say this. They prey on tourists. So just keep your wits about you. They um Oh, we look they like tourists. We love do. to lure let's, people. Let's let's go hell. then. Let's go then. <laughs> oh no. Love love to see them try. <laughs> the, oh, the, something slipped. This is like the Cali equivalent of um, You won't like I would like I would like to join a cult to see if they could brainwash me. My bet they can't. <laughs> All right. I, I would like would... to just give uh, uh, 8,500 gold to Clack to tuck in his safe place. Okay. 
What? You see, he kind of dips behind uh, a building right after you give him the gold, and then he comes back a couple seconds later. What's up? What? What's up, guys? <laughs> Let's go. Let's go to the bar. What? What? Letters didn't to- say that out loud, right? So <laughs> no, 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 no. I lean over and do it. I'm just saying, like, you know, we've been, I we as know. a party have been pickpocketed at least once before. I want to know uh, so bad what the <laughs> place is. Safe places? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, we go to the hell bar. All go right. Hell bar. Hell bar. So you, I mean, it's better uh, than the abyss place. Like, <laughs> Blood those, fortress. Those, okay, but those aren't the two options, right? Hell bar. <laughs> there's other. There's Asmar. plenty of bars. There's plenty of bars. <laughs> Let's there's go to the hell bar with an Asmar. Um, the blood Let's fortress is not a tavern. Uh, it <laughs> I was hoping it fortress. was, Tim. I was really, really hoping it was. Yeah, Rika's like, oh no, that place is, mm-mm. and it's closed right now, apparently. Anyways, um, <clears throat> this way, and she kind of. Should we poke the around there? That's a bad idea. Oh. You don't have you heard any rumors about why that place is closed? You know who'd know? Probably the folks at the hell bar. They'll know about that. You know they're keeping tabs on those demons. Wait, this is important. Are we going to the bar for demons or devils? Devils. devils. This is the devil Wait, bar. The de- I thought they were all like the hoity toity, we play by the book baddies. And they have the rock to the bar. bar yet. Okay, you're right, you're right, you're right. I'll right. cross that. Palish bridge. Tim, when we come Tim to you it. know right. how you know how Callie's eyes glow sometimes. Mm-hmm. Is there any way I can make that happen? Can I? Can, can I like? Is there any way I can make my eyes do that? Uh, or is it just when I notice feel like... as you get closer to this place, your eyes start glowing just oh, naturally. God. Oh, cool, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. The concentration <laughs> of devils. Cool. Okay, cool. Or, I mean, you're also rocking up with a tiefling, so I mean, that's something. I don't know. Yeah. Have some infernal heritage. I am going to cast skill empowerment on okay. Neppy oh. to give her expertise in perception because I will trust that she will watch if anyone steals things from us yes. going oh, into yeah. this bar. Yes, oh, bet, your, bet your bip I will. That's just me looking out for me. <laughs> All right. So, so yeah, you have expertise for an hour, Neppy. Have a great time. Oh my gosh, that's my perception is so high. <laughs> Do I get? Does my passive perception increase too, or is it just perception yes. checks? Okay, so my Your passive perception, perception is also twenty-five, Tim. Okay. All right. So you roll up, uh, and you see what is like, a, a, literally a massive head. Uh, like you can see, like large kind of horns coming out the front. Um, a big wide mouth uh, that is the door um, and just like <laughs> flaming eyes, like red hot, just like <sighs> kind of at the front. Um, and you can see the nose is pierced and there's like a big brass ring that kind of hangs down uh, and it's massive. Like it's, you know, it's probably six feet across. Um, and every once in a while you can see flames just like jet out of the nose um over it's the so people gaudy kind of i love in. it <laughs> um, and you can see there are like there is uh like there is kind of a lineup uh it's not huge at the moment but it seems like there is like a uh a fairly large um devil kind of standing at the door um you can see kind of like hunched over uh looks like somewhat um almost ape-like uh, kind of big blue skin, like big hairy, like shoulders, uh, kind of like kneeled over as people are kind of coming up. Uh, and like, there is a huge wooden door that you just like pushes open. It's like saloon doors. Um, and you can hear there's music going on. Um, and like, as you kind of line up and head in, he's just letting people in. He's like, and you kind of come up. He's like, "Mm, there's a, a cover of five gold pieces each. Can I insight check him? Sure. Bullshit. <laughs> I say out loud. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> and like as Callie, as you walk by, he kind of like his eyes get bigger and goes. <sighs> <laughs> oh, that's <Yes>. gross. 
Is Tim in in your head canon? Is every demon just a gross guy at a bar? I guess you'll see. I mean, we've uh, all met No Lip Leroy. Uh, like we're going to a bar of these people. This whoa. is where all the gross guys at a bar hang out does, at their bar. He does the sniff. Oh, do I want to do this? Is this what I want to do before we? We're not even at the door. We're just at the door. I know. I know. I know. I know exactly. This is. Oh, I dropped my twenty. What the fuck? Wait till um, the pit is in sight. Oh no 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 no! Um, can someone pick? Do the same thing in their head. Pick a number. Yeah, between I one and twenty. One. And if okay, I roll, I oh, know you. Sh- I went last time. You, Sean. Okay. I think, I think I said if I roll over it. Look, I got the number. Look away, Lennon. I'm going to show the audience. Okay, do your thing. <laughs> oh, no. I got an eight. Yeah, I rolled a six. All right, I just decided six. six. I don't know what that means. Okay, uh, well, he's going to do the sniff. Callie's going to look at him, eyes glowing. Like, it grossed her out, but she's going to, her wings are going to, she's going to walk in with her wings out. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sure you're in the right place, little lady? <laughs> little. As, as you walk through. Perfectly. Okay. No, you're going into a good space when the DM is furiously going through his various monster manuals. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the bar we want to be at. Guys, I just had no, to go Tim's into got more a than devil's bar. Out. Wings out, eyes glowing. <laughs> All right. So you uh, you head in and you see it's it's pretty big, pretty big bar. Um, and you can see like the centerpiece is this large. It's probably about. 10 feet across, like 10 feet in diameter, um, orange glowing portal. Uh, and you can see runes all around the, the, the brimstone that surrounds it. Um, and there are like tables all surrounding it. Uh, you can see there's a stage on the far side um, with a, uh, like what looks like, almost like a spider headed person. Um, they're like humanoid, fairly thin, um, and not terribly tall. They're probably only about you know five feet, uh, but very visibly their head is that of a spider. Um, and they are playing a large harp uh, that has just like uh, like a flaming skull at the front of it. Um, and you can see like as they pl- are playing this like harp, pretty like pretty rockingly. <laughs> um, it's like a rock harp. It's crazy. Uh, and like you can see like flames kind of coming off of it as they're playing. Uh, and you can see all manner of folks. Uh, there are plenty of non devils, um, but you also see a number of, of devils. You can see most of the wait staff uh, are these kind of like misshapen, almost look like just like they're like almost like blobs Aww. of a facsimile yeah. of a person. Uh, their Sad. faces are all kind of like stretched and they they're just wretched uh, as they're just like carrying these like uh, oh, these um, trays around uh, and like with drinks and like people are just just taking drinks off of these trays and then you see they kind of like slurp back over to the bar <laughs> um, and you can see at the bar there is a uh, a large um, a large devil you can see he's got one arm is uh, a fairly large pincer i um, you can see he's just like he's like got a bunch of lemons that he's just cutting in half um <laughs> and like he's got another quite large kind of humanoid hand with a fairly like ferocious claw um and you can see he's grabbing kind of large bottles off the back rack and then he's got two smaller hands underneath that is just mixing drinks um he's got four hands He's got four hands, yeah. Three hands, well, like one three, claw. Yeah, three hands, three one hands, claw. Three hands, one claw. I mean, yeah, that's what they call him. Um, and he's <laughs> kind of fairly, almost like draconic-like face and kind of fairly large horns. Um, and you can see uh, there is uh, a few other servers. So some of the servers that are not uh, these kind of wretched blob-like creatures, um, you can see are, are very beautiful. Um, there's about four of them, um, two men and two women, um, or male and female presenting uh, beautiful wings, um, kind of bat-like wings, and they're kind of floating around uh, with drinks and kind of visiting different tables. And they are 
gorgeous. Uh, they are some of the like most beautiful people you've ever seen. Um, and they are entirely naked. Uh, um, Great. Except for like a little, they have like a little apron for tips. Um, <laughs> I love it. But you notice that like the, the drinks, like you can see the like blob like creatures just carrying drinks around. People just seem to be taking drinks off of these things. There doesn't seem to be much money exchanged. Rico, what is the uh, deal here? Um, every, all the drinks are free. It's a trap. Um, don't get drunk here. It's not a good idea. What happens so, when you get drunk? Uh, well, they'll push you in the pit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of the whole deal. So um, here, we'll just get a table and uh, <laughs> the drinks are good. D definitely, if you want to drink, you can drink. Just don't, I would maybe try not to get drunk. I think we should pick a table near the pit. I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like not next to it, but the table next to the table can next I, to the pit. Can I perceive there was like a what's balcony up when I walk in? <laughs> if I get uh, it. Yeah. No, it's all one. Le uh, well, actually, there is a there is a balcony kind of up top, um, and you can see that like there is a stairwell up that looks to be kind of roped off. Um, and you do see some figures kind of moving around up on the top balcony there. Tim, what have, mm -hmm. what's, if I'm perceptioning when I walk in, just like vibe check in, can I do a perception? Which creatures in the Moss Eisley Cantina look up from their drinks as we walk <laughs> in? <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, make a perception check. Yeah. Can I jump in on that perception check too? Sure. Yeah. That is going to be in 19. 24. Uh, 24. 17, uh, 12 plus 7. 19? With, yeah. yeah. With the exception of the, the Lemures, the little uh, blobby guys, they've all clocked you. <laughs> Cool. You see there's also a number of imps kind of skittering around as you're actually looking like you're like, oh, like they're moving pretty quickly, but you can see there's a bunch of imps kind of running in throughout. And you see there is a figure that kind of leans over the top railing um, and sort of looks down at you. Who uh, that? You can see this kind of like large robed figure, uh, tiny little wings over his shoulders, um, tons of rings on his, or uh, tiny wings and tons of rings on his hands um, and kind of like very jowly, no hair, kind of greenish sort of skin and large teeth. Cool. Yeah, yeah. we sit near um, at the table near the pit, I can imagine. Uh, Tim, just for just for kicks, just for kicks, oh uh, divine God. sense, what's happening for me? There's devils everywhere. There's devils everywhere. <laughs> It's almost an overload. You're like, oh. it'd be really <laughs> funny if they weren't devils and it was all for show. All for show. All for show. Just an elaborate Scooby Doo episode. Yeah. <laughs> You're meddling kids and your little pet too. Um. And you can see that the figure that's leaned over is also like almost got like a bat like nose um, and kind yeah. of chuckles to itself. Oh, um, do I? Sorry. You hear this kind of <laughs> and kind of stands back up and turns its head. Do I clock him when he looks oh, like? Did I? Over. Oh yeah, you saw the guy up there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Kelly. I'm gonna wave oh, at him. A, I'm gonna wave a, at him. Oh, you're waving. Okay. I'm waving. Yeah. I'm gonna wave at him. He kind of like looks back, <laughs> and then he waves back, and then he points. He kind of points down at where the like roped off stairs are. He goes. Oh yeah, let's go sit with that guy. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> Oh, disgrace. All right. I'm walking yeah. to the rope dog. Actually, Tim. Mm -hmm. My wings are out. I can just fly up to them. Yeah, you can just fly up if oh, you want. For five cents. All right, we'll see you up there. Fuck it. I'm flying up to them. I'm going to fly not over the pit, though, so I can't get, like, body slammed into the pit. Okay. So you're going to fly up? Oh. I will Stay at the bottom. Yeah. Of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I'm gonna up. Someone right. should go up with Kelly. I, I gonna... would like to go up with Kelly. I'll stay uh, near the bottom okay. of the pit. So the the, the thing, so you fly over the portal, 
No, 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 no. Can I fly around it? I said no, the, the, like the thing is like it's right over the portal. Can't stay with oh. letters. <laughs> I can't. I can't not fly over it. Uh, not to get up to him. No, not if you want to fly up to him. Kelly, why don't we just walk up? Fine, I'll walk up. <laughs> okay, if we're all walking up, then I'll walk up. <laughs> so we walk up. Right. Slammed we into the up. pit. <laughs> um. And as you are kind of walking over there, um, yeah. you see there is uh, two more of the, similar to the the bouncer out front, two more of those kind of um, are sitting near the, like kind of come up as you're getting there. Um, and they kind of look at all of you. Ugh, only two at a time. No. No? We're all going up there. Entourage. Make a uh, make a persuasion check or an intimidation check if you want. No, I'll, I'll persuade these guys. Look, buddy, we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we let a celestial walk in with just one bodyguard. Come on, <laughs> you get it, and I trust that he gets it because it was an eighteen plus. How how persuasive am I, Tim? How persuasive? Not that am I? persuasive. <laughs> I'm kind of persuasive. I'm. It's a plus six. That's a 24, Tim. Okay. Oh. All right, but we're coming up too. Oh. Kind of come up behind you. So you guys head up. Uh, and the top uh, part you can see is like very beautiful. There's a lot of gold, a lot of silver, um, a lot of platinum kind of like decor. It's pretty gaudy um, as you get up there. And you can see there is uh, that, that figure um, kind of standing near the edge of his hand kind of on the thing. Um, and you can see there are uh, a few imps uh, as well, kind of leaping around. I feel like um, I've been in this club scenario and I don't. And there is on the <laughs> other side, you now see that like uh, standing on the other side, there is like uh, another humanoid figure, but just entirely wrapped in chains. Uh, you can just mm -hmm. kind of see their eyes. He goes, oh, hello. What brings you here to the devil's maw? We don't get a lot of celestial folks here. Just stopping by on our way through. Oh, well, please sit, have a drink. He kind we of heard there was a pit. <laughs> oh, yes. Would you like to see it? No. Oh, <laughs> Would you? Course. Oh, I have been to the pit. Um, <laughs> and he kind of he gestures to uh, a seat kind of next to, there is a seat kind of across from where he's standing. Um, and he's, please, please, I'll get you a drink. And he kind of, uh, the, you see the imp, like kind of like waves his hand and the imp kind of like flies over and you see one of them like carrying a fairly large bottle of kind of like reddish liquid. And it's like struggling to kind of get through the air with the weight of this thing. Um, and you see another one kind of comes through with like four cups um, and kind of lays them down on a table nearby. Um, or kind of a large goblet of wine. Um, he pours two, and then uh, they each kind of bring one over, one to you, Callie, and, and one to the uh, to the other uh, person or creature. The chain guy? Uh, no, not the chain guy. The, the guy the sitting guy. across from me? Oh, guy. Jowlies. What yeah, does he jowlies. look like, he Tim? Like... Mm -hmm. oh, oh, boy. Yucky. Yeah, real yucky. I love when there was a comment a while ago, a very long time ago in the chat. They're like, oh, do these guys use theater of the mind? They're like, yeah, their DM just shows the books on screen. And I love that. <laughs> ah, sometimes. Because <laughs> uh, the love art that. is so good. Uh, so good. Please. Cheers. And he kind of holds out his goblet. <sighs> oh, he's giving it to Callie. You don't have oh, to. That's rude, but go on. <laughs> Yeah, like of course Callie's gonna sit down and cheers him. Like we've put okay. Callie in a situation now where she's gonna We've put Callie in a situation. We've no. put Royal We <laughs> the Royal We. I was like, okay. We've put Callie in a situation where Callie's gonna be the most Callie. The Royal They has put Callie, Callie Ca in a situation. Callie is, Callie is gonna be the most pre Kamea Callie that you may have ever seen. <laughs> it's the nicest way to put it. Okay. I'll sit down and I'll cheers. Okay. Yeah. Get yeah. back down. Yeah. Take a big swig. Yep. And it is. Ooh, it is strong wine. 
It is like it tastes more like a spirit than a wine. Uh, as you're like, just I'm sorry. Is that a little too strong for you? No, I can feel a bit stronger. Oh, you want the good stuff? I do want the good stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He kind of waves his hand. He uses the Ian comes back with a bottle of clear liquid this time, awesome. uh, and and he pours another large goblet, um, brings it over. He kind of holds it out. Letters is gonna tap on Callie's shoulder, and he's gonna he's gonna whisper, just assuming that there's an imp or something that can hear him. Uh, boss, before you get too deep in the cups, maybe ask this guy about uh, what's going on with the demons. You know, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you got it, boss. Um, you're just your bodyguard. <laughs> Wait, me, Lennon has a question. Yeah. What oh, demons are you? Uh. I think he's talking about why the um, oh, blood I'm just talking about that blood closed. fortress because these d- guys are devils which are like straight laced business demons and demons are like, <laughs> like oh the blood chaos. fortress is the, that's closed one? yeah yeah it's conspicuously yeah. closed and Sean Deppner wants to know so <laughs> Larry's is asking <laughs> Callie yeah, to yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. plug this guy for information he thinks he's using us we'll use him yeah okay. to our ends very cool okay Blackwater I'll take the I'll take the goblet of clear liquid, and before I cheers, she's gonna like pull it away for a second. Mm. Like the blood fortress. Ooh, what do you know about the blood fortress? I want to know what you knew about the blood fortress. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, come here, come here. I just can't be just spilling my guts here. Come stand with me disgusting but i will yeah <laughs> all right so he stands you stand with him and he kind of like he puts his arm sort of around you yeah. and like kind of like as you're sort of standing um and he kind of like pulls you over to like the railing so and he kind of like looks over his shoulder to make sure they're not listening and he goes well you see now well cheers how close is she to the railing they're standing against the railing <laughs> right over out. the pit Right over the yep. fit, yeah. Um, take a swig. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll need you to make a constitution saving throw. There it please. is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Dokey. Not a jokey. If I keep rolling this dice. Nothing bad can happen. Nothing bad can happen <laughs> if I keep. You can live in this moment forever. <laughs> uh, this this is like the waiting to sneeze moment. Just. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. <laughs> okay, that's gonna be a twenty-five. Okay, so you feel like it hits you like it's almost a hundred percent pure alcohol, and there's something uh, else in it as well. As you're like your your vision starts to blur. And you like, you feel yourself, like your knees start to buckle a bit. And then you kind of like, you kind of grit through it. And it's like, the taste is quite pleasant going down. (laughs) And he kind of looks and you can see that like, he kind of is like, oh, good. Yeah, it's good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Well, now the blood fortress. (laughs) Now rumor is the demons had packed up and went home. There's been rumblings of a power vacuum. Seems as though their god came into a bit of trouble. So they're a bit aimless. Who's their god? I don't think I can say his name here. You know, the chained one. Rumor is he got cut up to a million pieces. Someone did him dirty. Mm. Now, you didn't hear this from me, but my boss and their boss and that boss's boss planning something real big. Going to take advantage of the situation. Big how? Well, you got to strike when your enemy's weak. And as he looks at you, I need you to make an intelligence saving throw for me, please. Motherfucker. And does this have anything to do with charming? Because it it's... is not charming. Oh. Come on. Come on. <laughs> uh... OK. 
okay. It's gonna be twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're fine. Can I tell he tried to do something? Uh, no. No. (laughs) You just his eyes were like you just were locked into his eyes for a second. And this grotesque face, you were like, you were just sort of lost in his eyes for a second. And then, uh, huh. well. I actually, I'm going to head downstairs and stand near the pit. <laughs> <laughs> he- Where are you going? Where are you going? Well, I was just going to go uh, get another drink from downstairs. We've got drinks up here. Have some of this. Yeah, no, but I made eyes at one of the... Uh, uh, Goobies down there, and I want to try my luck. Are you refusing a drink? That would be no. I'm just trying to. Rude. I'm just trying to look after my employer, which I'm sure you can appreciate. And he kind of looks over at you, Kelly. Surely, you wouldn't have your help refuse such an offer from the proprietor of this beautiful bar. Seems rude, don't you think? like say again i think anyone can refuse to drink if they like i don't think we have to force anyone to drink i'm not asking him Mm. i'm not forcing him to drink i am asking him to partake in a drink Mm. seems like the same thing okay sure sure you can have him wait down by the pit that's fine Glad we agree. Yeah. You see, he kind of like looks over uh, at the chained fellow. Kind of looks over. Anyways, uh, I guess I was just running my mouth about the blood fortress. Why have you come here? I already said. We were just stopping by. So you did. Well, I guess, I mean, if you're just stopping by, I should probably put on a bit of a show. It's not every day we get angel blood in here. Oh, I can imagine. I'm going to keep my eyes trained on the chain dude, the chain devil. Yeah, my eyes don't leave that guy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> as he says no. that. Oh, no. Oh, as he says no. that, he kind of... Uh, he takes one of his rings. Yeah. Um, you know, I uh, I got this mm. from uh, a dear, dear friend of mine. And uh, told me if I ever needed help, just whisper in it. So, uh, and you see he kind of leans over and letters you watch. Oh. Uh. As next to the pit, they're like a leap of fire kind of <laughs> pulls out uh, and you see standing at the edge of the pit, uh, appearing a large, uh, a huge, it's, it's head kind of like just below where the balcony is, uh, kind of leans over. You see this massive horned creature kind of like look down and snarl at you. And that's where we're gonna take our break. <laughs> uh, oh no. Black or your team. We can't go anywhere without <laughs> making a scene. Um, we, we chose to, we chose oh, to be yeah, here. For the we rest of this. you, uh, it looks familiar. You've seen one of these before. This a Garistro? Oh, Timothy. Timothy. We still want to hear mm-hmm. what uh, what Erika has to say about the shadow file. Just for the record, <laughs> once we finally get like a quiet table to ourselves, get a couple drinks and us. We do. We do want to Arika have that drinks and talking because we have a meeting file. in you know three and a half hours. Um, <laughs> oh, thanks everyone for coming and hanging out with us. We will be back after about a ten minute break. Please stick around. Grab yourself some spider milk, and we will see you so see you shortly. Bye, folks.
Hey folks, Emma here. So, do you experience lore panic? You know, that deep, dark, sinking feeling that your DM or campaign notes are missing and disorganized? That you've forgotten an important plot point and it's going to send your life into a swirling void of angst and regret? Well, if you're like me, then you'll be happy to know that Blackwater is here to help. Yes, you, little lore keeper. We're really proud to announce our partnership with Silverwing Armory. Silverwing Armory is a Canadian company that specializes in gaming goodies, RPG resources, and nerdy necessities to help plan your campaign. My personal favorite are their campaign notebooks. Each of these beautifully designed books is handmade and crafted, showcasing original designs by the creator herself. There's enough that they'll match perfectly with wherever and whenever your game is set. They're also fully customizable, with different types of paper, dotted, lined, or graph, whatever works best for you. Finally, they're system agnostic, so no matter what game you run, from D&D to Call of Cthulhu, your lore is kept safe and organized however you like it. Head on over to their Instagram and website at Silverwing Armory, and use our promo code BLACKWATER for 10% off at checkout. It supports this amazing Canadian business and helps support our stream and the story we keep telling week after week. So you get less of this, and more of this. Silverwing Armory, for the lore keeper in all of us. Enjoy the rest of the show.
Hey guys, it's me, Adam, and I'm here to talk to you about the sponsor for tonight's episode, Legendcraft. Legendcraft is a Canadian woodworking company that makes D&D and tabletop gaming tables and accessories. They are a couple of passionate crafters that create items that will instantly become a highlight of any tabletop or RPG player's game night. An absolute favourite of mine is the Mountain King board gaming table. This table is bonkers cool, looking like it is straight out of a Dwarven King's Hall. It's really unlike anything I've ever seen. We feel really good about endorsing this Canadian business that brings so much passion into something we care so deeply about. So head over to their Instagram, at legendcraft.ca, to have a look at what they're making and let them know that Blackwater sent you. And if any of you fall in love with any of their amazing products, you can go to their website and use the promo code BLACKWATER for 5% off. It supports a Canadian business and also helps support our stream in this crazy D&D game we love. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of the show. And we're back, 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 back. I made a small, I'm making a small retcon because I was looking at the wrong pages in my books. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, the big gorilla guys uh, are not gorilla guys. Um, they are uh, they much are... tougher devils. <laughs> Ah, no, they uh, they are large and muscular, um, but and you have seen ones like these these before as well, um, but slightly different. Uh, they're kind of masked figures. Um, mm -hmm. Their masks almost look childlike, um, but they're fairly large, muscular they're bodies. Big boys with baby masks, baby faces. Kind of, yeah. Ooh, yeah. yucky! Nobody likes that. Yeah. Um. But other than that, the Garistro is still there. Um, which uh, letters? I'll have you make an intelligence check. I'm into that. Straight int. Ooh, that's going to be twenty-two. Okay. Um, you remember the last time you saw these was when they um, came through a broken seal from the abyss in Wolfreen. It's odd. That there is a demon with all these devils. You don't know why. Huh. But it strikes you as odd. Fun. So I'll have everyone roll initiative. Oh, farts. So this thing's not here, Tim, to like juggle some you close up sleight of hand appeared, magic. It's kind of appeared by letters and it sort of snarled at him. Mm. Um, but other than that, I mean, you can't really gauge its intent. I'm not going to be any help to anybody. How Sadly, shitty my initiative is. Sadly, I rolled a natural 20. So. It's okay, you're just building them up now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. Gummy bears are a superior candy. Mm -hmm. They're so good. So good. Uh, okay, 25 to 20. 21. 21 for Callie. Also a 21. Uh, who has higher decks? Yana. So Yana goes first. Oh, boy. Uh, okay. And then 20 to 15. 15 to 10. 11. 11. For Koki. <laughs> Koki. <laughs> Uh, 10 to 5. 9. 9. 9. And what was yours, Nappy? For naps. I rolled a natural one. Getting them out of the way. Get them out of the way. Okay. Uh, all right. So, Yanni, you were up first. 
boy. Okay. So you you can't actually see what's happening down below unless you go and look. So you right kinda, now, I you would have felt a little bit of a rumble underneath your feet. Yeah, I would go over to the balcony. Okay, so you go and look, and you can see yeah the large creature kind of standing next to the to the pit from about ten okay. feet away from letters. Okay. Um. Okay. I'm gonna look at the guy uh, next to Callie, uh, the boss guy, um, and I'm gonna hold my action um, to cast negative energy flood, okay. um, and I'm gonna say, "He better be about to juggle or something." He goes, oh, he'll put on the show. Okay, <laughs> that sounded threatening. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast it then. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. So he needs to make a Constitution saving throw. Sounds good. Jowls or the grease throw? Jowls. Jowls. Mm-hmm. Oh no. Oh boy. I don't know what I thought would happen. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, what kind of save was that? A constitution save? Yeah. That's an 18. Oh, I think it mine. I think I'm an 18. Okay. Uh, double checking, yeah. So it will take half. He will take half, sorry. Uh, half, 5d12. Roll well, D and D Beyond. It's a bad set of D twelve. So that's thirty points of necrotic damage, so it's halved because he passed. It's a fifteen. Yep. Okay. Uh, all right. It is uh, Callie's turn. Can I see? Um, can I see the the grease drill? Uh, yeah, because you're standing right there. Yeah, you can see it. Um, does it look aggressive? I mean, it it uh make an insight check. Insight. What's my insight? Oh, that's pretty good. I got a natural twenty plus seven. <laughs> Yeah, it looks ready to throw down. It looks agitated. Like agitated. it looks like okay. it not only looks aggressive, but it looks like it's there's like a pain associated with it. Almost like a oh. like a bull in a bullfight. Okay. Mm. Um stop me if you heard this one. I'm gonna need a wisdom saving throw then, please. Okay. That is a that's a 22. Oh, 10. No, it's not. How far is letters from me? Uh, he's about uh, it's about 25 feet down. Um, 25 feet down? Mm-hmm. The grease just right in front of him? Yeah, it's about 10 feet away from him. I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on him. Okay. Um, Thank you, you very much. You guys see set by uh, two. Groove again to keep a tally. Um, and then I'm going to. My wings are still up for a little bit. I'm assuming are they out? Uh, has it been like? Uh, yeah, they would probably be near the end though, because you no, because you took them out before you went up, right? When I walked in. When you walked in, and it's eleven yeah. minutes. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have at least a minute left. Okay, I'm gonna use so, that yeah. minute then. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm gonna jump off yeah. of the balcony and just fly. Are you sure? Kind of flying over the pit. Yeah. Okay. Um, it is the grease trust turn. Cool. Uh, you see, it kind of snarls at you, letters. Mm-hmm. And backs up a little bit and kind of oh, takes boy. a wide arc. 
yep. and then begins to run at you. Th- and you see people just like clearing out of the way of like, just like people immediately are scattering when this happened. And it is just charging through tables right at you. Yikes. And being not my turn, I can't react to this. So <laughs> it's going to do its business. <laughs> uh, so it's going to make a gore attack. Oh, God. That is its right. That is a 22 to hit. I shield, and it does not. Nice. Thanks for that sh- uh, shield of faith, Callie. You're a legend. <laughs> so you watch as it like, boom, just like slams up against your shield, and it kind of stumbles backward. Uh, it is then going to, uh, it's going to use its other two attacks. Uh, yeah, it's going to use... It's other two attacks, so it's going to hit you with one of its fists first, or going to try to anyways. Uh, That is a 21 to hit. Nope. Okay. Uh, And then it's going to try to kick you with its hoof. That is a natural 19, so that's a 20, or a 32. That'll do it. That we can allow. God dang it. God dang it. <laughs> I don't want to fight a fucking grease drum. Because <laughs> you don't like party. 24 far. points of bludgeoning damage. 24? I, I want to And I need you to make a strength saving throw. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Ooh, wee. Skiddly wink a uh, Cal, you're not flying 10 feet a- above me, are you? Then no. I don't know how high the balcony is up, so 25 no. feet up. Yeah, no, I know that'd be silly. Uh, then I'll just be a 15, Tim. 15, that's a failure. So you get kicked in the pit. Oh, yeah, no, no, he can't do that because he had to do the circle around. Tim. Yeah, he came around, so he was charging at you towards Tim, the pit. Tim, I haven't <laughs> even had a turn, and you're kicking me in the pit? Yeah, because right. you were you were at the edge of the pit. I was, look, I was down. Look, I'll allow it, Tim. <laughs> I'm just. You went to the edge of the pit. It's yeah, not it. even <laughs> my turn. It's I'm going to allow been. it. <laughs> it's been. What? Look, Tim. I'm in the pit. I get it. Oh, how the <laughs> tables turn. <laughs> All right. So you watch as Letters gets kicked and falls prone and slides right off the edge into the pit. <sighs> and you just hear like, there's sort of a silence. And then a bunch of people go, yeah. <laughs> and you hear the, the, the big jolly guy upstairs. is like, <laughs> Uh, all right, and it is his turn. Um, he is going to. Oh, I, I am. I am flying over the pit, Tim. Yeah, you are over the pit. Uh... But I attacked him. Yeah, he's gonna look at you, uh, <laughs> Yana, and I need you to make a. Let's see what this one is. I think it's an intelligence save for me, please. Is it against magic? I think I would be close enough to. Uh, it is. Yeah, it is magic. <laughs> I think I would be close enough to Yana because I just jumped off the balcony and flew. In front she's of the at the balcony's edge. And she's at the balcony's edge. So from <laughs> her. Uh, uh, yeah. How's a thirty? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You push it right I, out. I rolled a twenty. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, well, I tried. Uh, all right, it is, is that the, it? Uh, he kind of looks over across the way uh, as you see the chain devil. Uh, yeah. And now. How many chains? Two chains? Three chains? Two chains devil. <laughs> sorry, no. I couldn't resist. No. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm not. He's not. Uh-uh. Not in the slightest. Uh, the hmm. 
Uh, yeah, the chain devil is going to uh, it can reach across because the the hole is only about ten feet. It's the same as the the portal down below. Um, so he's going to attack you, Yana, uh, with his chain. Okay. So the first one is a twenty nine to hit. Uh, yep. <laughs> There's no stopping that. <laughs> I was calculating it for a second, and then I realized the terrible number you just said to me. <laughs> uh, so that's 16 points of slashing damage. Okay. And you are grappled. Hmm. Uh, I hate that. And, oh, res- forgot and I restrained. Full rested. Sorry, that was 16 points? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and let me just check. Uh-huh. I don't remember if you get advantage when you're restrained and you get attacked. Yeah, attack rolls have advantage. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. So then it's going to tag you with his other chain. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is, oh, that's way worse. That is only a 12 to hit. So no, nope. that won't hit. Okay. <laughs> so I guess you with the one and you are does. grappled and restrained at the moment. Okie dokie. Uh, Okay, it is Kokanee's turn. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, I <laughs> this is going so at this point. <laughs> this is going great. So okay. I'm so going good. to not the word I'd use, but that's a I'm, word for sure. I'm going to holy weapon. And well, that's good. We're, we're gonna see how many jowls we can remove. <laughs> um. Uh. That'll be a 23 to hit, Tim. 23 hits, yeah. Yeah, great. Uh, but I need you to make a wisdom save, please. I get the plus four from Callie, right? Uh, no, because you're not right up against the... Yeah, I gotta be right by the... I well, would be because I'm right beside him. Jowls. Yeah, but you're not up at, like, you're, you've, like the way you've come at him. Because Yana is there. <sighs> Yana came up next to Callie. So you'd be the, on the other side of him. And with the amount of space that he takes up, you'd be more than 10 feet from him. He's Kelly. got many jowls. Okay. Well, that is that is a 19. Oh. Uh, yeah, 19 is the DC. So you make it. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. 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 Honor above. Yeah. Uh, Honor above. So I die, right? Yeah, you die. Um, no, you succeed, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so nothing happens. So make your attack. Cool. Oh, what was that? A nineteen? Yeah. Oh, nineteen for the wisdom save. Oh. Real man of rush. Oh boy. We were just going to summer voluntarily. I feel like I feel like we we knew this was gonna happen though. I feel like I I would like to debate that. <laughs> I didn't know this was gonna happen. Thirty one points of damage, radiant nice. damage. Yep. And I will attack again. Okay. Um, can I now that I know that this is an effect that happens? Is there a way to pivot like up against the railing so that I'm within range of Cali? Uh, yeah, like. Sure. Yeah, you can move okay. around. Then I will do that, and then I'll. Take well, recognizing it is a bit meta gamey, <laughs> but yes, you can. Is like, do I, like, would my character know that that is what is happening? That uh, I'm, I'm having to, like, that I'm experiencing an that you effect have to make on a wisdom me. Save? No, not that I have to make <laughs> like, but like, I know, I know as Kokanee, who's like a low-ish int whiz save character. Like, if stuff is happening to my brain, I want to be within 10 feet of Cali because it's the only thing I have. Yeah, you succeeded, so you didn't... I don't know. Happened. You don't know. Okay, then I would not do that. If I don't know, I don't do that. Yeah. Uh, so I will make another attack because I would do that. Uh, that'll be a 20 to hit. Yep, 20... Yep, oh, uh, no, 20 does not hit. And a Ooh. 17 wisdom... Oh, so it doesn't matter for wisdom. Okay. <laughs> Uh, no, no wisdom save this time. Then just I on just the first miss. one. Cool. Yeah. That's my okay. turn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. A, a twenty didn't hit. 
20 did not hit. No. His jowls so thick? So thick. Oh. So thick. Mm-hmm. Much, much wobblies. Uh, all right. It is now Letter's turn. You, Could you describe the scene for me, Tim? You find yourself in a cage, a fairly large iron cage. Um, you can see the portal above you is not there anymore. Um, and you look around and the, uh, like the, there is iron bars, you assume iron, um, and they're quite thick. And you can see on the outside, uh, a very, like a huge winged devil, um, kind of striding by. Kind of like looks in. I would like to say beans and, uh. And uh, 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 Tim, mm-hmm. do I see any kind of doodads or what's it's that might activate a portal from my vantage point? Uh, make an investigation check. Oh, I'd love that, Tim. Is well, that perhaps a dog carrying keys? <laughs> 24. <laughs> 24. It's a demon there dog. Does, there does not seem to be any uh, portal activating devices inside of the cage. Um, and the cage is fully closed. Yeah, it's a oh, yeah. box. It's a box. Uh, but you can see there are a number of other cages. Um, mm-hmm. And you can see that like there are um, there are open portals over some of the empty ones. Okay. How far away are these empty ones, Tim? Uh, the closest one is probably... It's down a ways that you can see. You can just kind of see the edge of it. It's probably 90 feet, maybe 80 feet. 90 feet, 90 feet. Okay. And so I'm going to say 90 feet to my right is this portal. Big boy, I can only assume, is also to my right. Or oh, yeah, like, he's right he there. Between, yeah, he's, yeah, he's between me out. and the portal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Well, uh, if I can, we're just going to give this a shot. I'm just going to misty step or tried to miss step out of this cage, which I hope is not an anti-magic cage, okay. uh, 30 feet in the direction of that open portal. Does that succeed? Okay, you go to Misty <laughs> Step and nothing happens. Oh, anti-magic cage, that's great. Uh, well, now we know. Good, good, good. Uh, thick bars, thick bars. <laughs> not the Pretty thickest thick bars. you've ever seen. Um, thick bars, huh? <laughs> Wait, I can be smart. Uh, 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 uh. Warner carried. Fuck. Is there anything on this gentleman, like a key? What is the what is what is the what is the thing that controls the mechanism by which I am locked? Uh, and does you, this man have a, a, a keychain? Yeah, you can see there is a door. Uh-huh. Um, it, it looks like there is, uh, he does not have a keychain. You can see there are a number of, um, in your sort of looking, you can see at one end, there looks to be a number of levers. Um, it seems like they're sort of lever active. They're huge, like this creature, um, which you can see is holding a fairly, um, pretty thick mace, uh, and, uh, not much else, not wearing a ton of clothes, um, huge kind of horrifying face big horns, um, fairly imposing um, kind of greaves over the hands. Um, yeah, it seems to be, uh, he seems to be the kind of warden. And yeah. then, like, you can see that the, the, it just goes on for a while. A lot of cages, yeah. a lot of cages. Good. Uh, well, I ain't one for <laughs> sitting around and uh, this guy is uh, going to hit me if I do this, but I'm going to do it, Tim. I'm going to. Yeah. I'll say his mace is too big to get through the bars. Okay. I'll try to fucking bust up the bars with my hammer. And then I guess we'll see whose hammer is superior once I get out. Okay. Gonna take my hammer and try to. <laughs> Hit, I'm gonna booming blade this cage in the hopes that it moves away from me. Is that anything? Your booming blade won't work. It's magic. You're right. Well, then I'll I'll still hit it. I only hit it once, anyways. 
Okay, make an I'll attack roll. Hit it really hard. Okay, yeah, that's like a twenty-three for okay, yeah, a you bar. Smoke the bars. Uh, roll damage for me. I'd love that, Tim. Yeah, I said fucking twenty. I mean nine, nine. Yeah, nine. you bend. You bend some of the bars. Uh, your hands hurt like hell from the vibration uh, as it kind of reverberates through your hands. Um, but the bars are a little bit bent. Is it enough to get my big, big body through? He watches like his head kind of like, <laughs> and he like looks down. Is it enough yeah. to get my big, big body through? <laughs> uh, no, no. Oh boy. <laughs> well then I'll stay in the cage. <laughs> <laughs> you back up quickly as he's like kind of looking and you see his hand kind of come up against the cage uh all right it is nappy's turn let's see what he his initiative is okay um uh all right it is nappy's turn okay um so i'm gonna stand up because i would assume i would have been seated or something uh, just like around the table before we everything just exploded mm-hmm. yeah um, where is Mr. Jolly Man? He's right up against the railing. Uh, how far? And he's Yana right next to him. Kokanee's right next to him. Yeah. Yeah, your friends are around him. Yana is is wrapped up in chains. Right. And Kokanee's right up in the and Callie's flying over the pit. I saw I saw letters go downstairs and heard the cheer. So mm-hmm. I didn't see him go into the pit. I'm gonna <sighs> I'm going to try and get in eye line of Mr. Jowls. Okay. And in Infernal, I'm going to try just talking to him. Okay. What are you going to say? Look, obviously, we got off on the wrong foot. You seem like a respectable businessman. Let's make a deal. Okay. You kind of, you see his eyes kind of narrow. And I would just like raise an eyebrow. I'm speaking to him in his language. I'm also a tiefling. Okay. Make a persuasion Mm -hmm. check for me. That's the only pers- reason it's not a disadvantage because you mentioned a deal. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Your the friends f- have just been attacking him. I know. Because this is just not going to go well for any of us. Okay. It's going to be an 18. 18. Okay. All right. He kind of takes it in. You'll okay. see what he says on his turn. Okay. Uh, all right, it is uh, back to the top of the order. Yana, you're up. I saw letters go into the pit, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to use my ethereal puppeteer ability on the Garistro. Okay. So, depending on its intelligence. Uh, uh, its intelligence is a six. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> then... It just needs to make a charisma saving throw against my DC then. That is a 17. (laughs) I look over the railing as like the ethereal like puppet strings like reach out and grab a hold of the Garistro. And I look at him and I say, go get letters. Bring him back. And that's my turn. All right. I can't break the restraint because I think that takes a full action. Yeah, that takes an action to try to break it. Uh, All right. It is Callie's turn. Oh, I'm so fucking glad you did that. I'm so glad you did that. (laughs) I didn't want you to fly into the pit. I was going to fly into the pit because Callie didn't know it was under there. I was like, all I like, I was like, no one does something. Callie's going to the pit because she doesn't know what's in there. (laughs) Callie thinks she can fly in and get it. Um, oh. <laughs> so do I see the Grease Joe moving towards the pit, Tim? Uh, it? You see its eyes kind of flicker with sort of a blue, like uh, that kind of um, sort of 
it's bluish yeah right like this kind of like soft greenish. greenish this sort of soft greenish uh glow around its eyes that you are familiar with yana's magic so you see something shift you're not ex- see like, something shift and you heard and- her yell go and get letters I just want to also want to check from Callie's stand, uh, I guess, point. If the, this might be, if the cage is anti-magic and he's in a cage that is anti-magic, Callie would have felt Shield of Faith drop, yes? Uh, he also, as far as you know, went to a different plane. So you're not sure if your magic would last over the planes. You don't. You would have felt it drop. Yeah, you yeah. know that you're not concentrating on it anymore. Good boy. And I can't understand what Neppy said because I don't know Infernal. <laughs> uh, Neppy's also got her hands up just like this. I know. That's, very why much- does, that's why she doesn't want to hit uh, Jowls, man. <laughs> There's the chain guy who's got Yana. Chain guy who's got Yana. Yeah, the chains are over the pit. Or over the, the like, top part. So he's, like, around on the other side, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he reached across. Can I go and hit him? You can fly like up it. and hit him, yeah. Okay, I'm going to hit him, then. And is he a fiend? He is a fiend. He's a fiendish fiend. I get to hit fiends. With <laughs> Most my fiendly fiend that's ever fiended. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, those are good. I have to pull my cheat sheet. Oh, why did that Just not? Just casually fighting in a hell bar. There it is. Oh there it is. There it is. Okay. I've hit this guy for, let's see, not a crit with wings, if undead or, undead or fiend, there it is. What was it to hit him? It was, I got, um, I got a, fuck, 27? Oh yeah, that hits. Nice. And uh, 25. Yep, those both hit. Ooh, good, 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 yes, good. Um... Oh, do I want to kill this man? Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, come just, into, we just come just into hear. their bar. <laughs> shady. Uh, like, they summoned a hell bull at I'll, us. I, I, I would, I would almost like to believe that this is this almost like it's in... Uh, Callie can't help. She just does more damage to fiends. It's not her fault. <laughs> I just Oops, do. Don't hit the hurt. player. Hit the game. We just yeah. came into a bar just and as... stepped to the dude who owns the bar. He <laughs> waved at us <laughs> after I, giving us after the eye. I, I waved. I waved. I waved first, and then he waved at me. Technically. <laughs> oh, you waved first, then yeah, it's justifiable to push your friend into hell. Oh, did you wave? Yeah, 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 yeah. You deserve to go to hell. You're right. No, no, you didn't deserve to go to hell. In the fine print. It's, but it's, I feel yeah, like yeah. we knew this was coming. The second we went upstairs, that was bad. That was bad. That was we knew like, this was coming the second we went to a hell bar. Yes. Are we here? Yes. Can I we have a meeting in three and a half hours. Bye. We'll nap. We'll look, we'll chal- check out the blood for- fortress, just a quick flyby, see if there's a weakness <laughs> in defenses so that we can make a play before the devils do. That's the thing. We're let, now enemies let, with all the devils. We fucking snake them on their move. We take the blood fortress first. Let us, you're talking about all these things we're going to do in the three hours. You're still in hell. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For like 12 so seconds. Think. Okay. I'll be, I'll be fine. Look, I've bent the okay. bar a little bit. I hit it two more times. It's bent a lot. And then I get my big body through the big bend. Uh, the Greastro picks you up and carries you home. Yeah, I would get another big horn man coming to help. <laughs> Tim, this is going to be 111 points of damage to this guy. Yeah, how, how do you want to kill him? <laughs> <laughs> just fucking one shot the dude. You're just sending him home. Devils, oh. demons, they can't die unless they're in hell. <gasps> okay. Oh. I could kill that big guy. Okay, I guess. I guess what Callie's <laughs> I don't gonna like do. That big guy. I guess Callie's gonna do 
<laughs> Callie's gonna be Callie. I'm sorry for what Callie's about to do. She's just, just gonna come up. It's just gonna be like a one two shot. It she's gonna make it look easy because it was. Um, <laughs> and then she's gonna um point to Jowls across the bar. She's gonna look at him, point at him, point down to the pit, and make the up motion like get him the fuck out <laughs> okay so you just decapitate him just, just down um you still see still have my hands raised kind of looks over <laughs> he takes that in for sure he takes that in <laughs> uh is now the pit fiends turn in but we're back in hell we're gonna jump back to hell real quick you watch as it leans closer to the bar it's like fearsome mouth and glowing orange red eyes. Don't do that again. Does it say that in common? No, it says it in infernal. I don't. I don't know what he says. Okay, you just. I menacing. respond in Minotaur. I'm sorry. I'm not from here. I don't know what the rules are. Do you? I, you? I'll hit it again. Do you want me to hit it again? I'm not from here, and that's gonna be how I respond. <laughs> It sounds good. Uh, yeah, that's all it's going to do. Um, it is now the Garistro's turn. Mm. And the Garistro, uh, you watch as it, like, <laughs> Kelly, you see it kind of like, and just jump in the pit. Yes, good boy. <laughs> and letters, you watch as the Garistro, for a second, as the portal opens, you feel your magic of the magic of your magic items return for a brief second as the portal opens and closes again as it arrives down as it lands on the ground was it a portal directly above me or a new uh, was, different portal no it was above you where you came in oh so yeah it's in the cell with you now <laughs> oh um, we're together <laughs> yeah it's in the cell with you it's like cramped cell. so like the op- <laughs> the thing opens and yeah you watch as the like the like the anti magic stopped blips portal opened yeah like blips open <gasps> the portal opens inside the cage inside got the cage. it and then uh-huh. closes back up and the magic I field see. goes back up um as you watch it like uh kind of like look at you and you can see kind of like a greenish glow around its eyes and then it sort of like looks up <laughs> at where it came from <laughs> and then it's like and then it's just gonna charge at the bars <laughs> Good boy. Good, good boy. Uh, uh, I like back up expecting to just get charged again. (laughs) Fuck, you're (laughs) thorough. (laughs) (laughs) You got me. (laughs) Follow Uh, me to hell, why don't you? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, these all hit. Nice. Yeah, good boy. Double damage. It, it's a siege monster, so it does double damage. So you watch as it like it goes full on, just like and it just slams through the iron bars as they look just smash open and bend uh, as it gets its head through. You watch it gets like scratched up and stuff like that. Um, as you see that like the pit fiend is kind of like kind of steps back a bit. Um but the bars are broken. The grease throws out. Um, all right. Uh, it is now the gentleman up top, the jelly man. Um, as you watch, uh, he kind of like looks at you, Neppy, and in infernal. Actually, he says it in common. He goes, "Well, by my count, you're still plenty outnumbered." Um, and then he's going to attack Kokani. Uh, all right, so the first one is he's going to use his ooh actually he can do two creatures so he's going to do um, Kokani and Yana I need you both to make wisdom saving throws against magic is Yana technically not uh, grappled anymore because I killed uh, yeah magic. she's not grappled and she is still within 10 feet of you because you're on the other side. You're like just at the edge. Cool. Um, and that'll and be a 17. 17. Is, is it against magic, Tim? It is a, a, yeah. It's an ability. I don't know that it's, I'll say it's magic. It is magic. Okay. It's a magical ability. 
Good, I needed that. Um, that's 16. Okay, those are both failures. Yep. Um, so you both take uh, 26 necrotic damage. And you are both Halved. blinded. Mm. Oh. Um, as you want, like your vision, like you feel this, like almost like poison seep into your mind. Um, and oh boy, I believe when you're blinded, attack rolls against the creature have advantage. Mm. Um, okay, so then it's going to use its. You watch as it, like, with incredible agility for the size of creature that this is. It pulls out a whip, and it's going to whip you, Kokani. Rude. Oh, the turntables. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a 27 to hit. Wait. That letters, will hit. Letters got thrown in the pit, and now Kokani's getting attacked with a whip. That's yeah, why we don't come to a hell bar. A creature. That's why we don't come to a hell bar. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Uh, so that is... Six and five is 11 points of slashing damage and 33 points of force damage. Dang. Cool. That's a cool whip he's got, hey? <laughs> uh, and then he's going to uh, use his disruptive touch on you. Kokanee. Okay, so on that one, I failed my con save for holy weapons, so it drops. Okay. Um... And that is a uh, 27 to hit for the disruptive touch. Yeah. Uh, okay. You take 44 points of necrotic damage. Okay. I'm going to kill this man. Not if I kill him first. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, that devil is off the table. Um and... Don't, he's just going to show up next to me. <laughs> It'll just be all the boys in the cage. <laughs> um, <laughs> you do see the other, the like the two sort of bouncers that brought you up are now also moving towards what's happening. Yeah. Um, it is uh, Kokanee's turn. So I am blind. Yeah. And I've taken 120 points of damage this oh, turn. Oh, shit. And I'm in combat with this guy. Okay. But if you think about it, you're blind, so it's just like you're fighting in the dark, like normal, right? This is, <laughs> this is I, I'm, I Close. understand what it's like when in those scenes, like the sort of comedic bit of every one of our games, where Finn drops his goggles and he's on the ground and he's looking <laughs> for them. Shanky's game. Ex exactly, and then he grabs <laughs> them and he puts them on just in time to look up to see the monster. That's that's where we're at. Um. Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, Spirit Guardians okay. at at sixth level. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to Action Surge to disengage. And move back um, behind my wife. Stumble backwards. <laughs> Blindly. I guess, you know what, Tim? I move back in the direction of my wife. I, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I don't know where I actually end up, but that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah you bumped um, into her. <laughs> and, you. I catch him. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Um, You're so welcome. And then as my bonus action, I will uh, second wind for maybe the fifth time you've done that ever in the 10 game. points of healing. <laughs> oh, you're fine. I'm now fine. I don't even have a cat close to me. Rogue is, uh, how paint does I have? All right. Hold on. Rogie, come say hi to your boyfriend. Yeah, so come say hi to your boyfriend, please. Oh, uh, he doesn't want to see her. Come say hi to your boyfriend. No, wait, she doesn't want to see oh, him. Oh, boy. <laughs> she doesn't want to see him. She's like, no. They had a fight recently. They had a fight. They're not yeah. speaking to each other. <laughs> but I mean, just just in case. Huh? Huh? <laughs> 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 Mickey. Okay. Uh, but that'll be, so that'll be 68 radiant damage to any of them that are within 15 feet on their start of their turns. I'm covered in cat hair. <clears throat> Two seconds. I'm already covered All in right. cat hair. It is now 
Letters turn. So Letters. back in hell, you watch as the bars have been broken out. Um, you uh, you kind of come, like you watch as the the like pit fiend is is just back from the bars. Uh-huh. Um, as there is now a space. All right, letter uh, 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 Tim. These levers. We got that one portal ninety feet that way. Portal over here. And where are them levers relative to that? Uh, the They're all lever- over on the left. Uh, portal on the right. No, they're farther on the right. Oh, um, it's the all left to the right. Just continues on for as far as you can see. Um, I don't want to. And the right, the levers are probably. Um, they're probably like they're a little bit farther. They're probably about one hundred and twenty feet. Oh, well, that's only thirty feet farther than where I want to get to. Uh, <laughs> so the grease throws opened up the bars, and uh, it's next to this pit fiend. Uh, oh, I mean, we're we're just gonna uh, 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 second verse, same as the. No, I'm going to run out first. I'm going to run out a few, like out of the bar, so you know, ten mm-hmm. feet. To get out, and I'm also the the pit fiend is quite large, so it, it takes up like a decent amount of space. There's room to move on either side, but you have oh, like you could run. I know. I just want to get out of this cage, and yeah. do I feel all my magic come back when I'm out of mm-hmm. the cage? Yeah. When you're great. The so I'll take that ten feet of movement, then I'll misty step through his legs in the most direct path possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, idiot, dummy. What? Yeah, absolutely. Fuck. <laughs> Luckily, none of my friends are around to hear me biff that insult. And then I'll run. <laughs> idiot, dummy. <laughs> I'll run the extra 20 feet of my movement. And I'll use my action to run another 30 feet. Uh, okay. So that'll be a full 90 towards those levers. I guess I'm directly underneath that one portal that's still open. And we'll tackle that on uh, my There's turn. no, you're sort of in the hallway now. Uh-huh. Uh, so and there's, there's another no portal. portals. There's no portals in the hallways. The, the portal's in another cell oh yeah it's a cell that's open but i gotta bust into that cell yeah well i've staked my life on these levers i'm feeling confident about them so we'll that's me just okay booking it for the levers hoping the grease throw is distracted all right uh it is now neppy's turn uh i'm gonna step in front of kokanee like guide him behind me and I'm just going to, like, put his hand, like, on my belt so that he knows where I am because he can't see. I'm going to grab the amber rod around my neck um, that's encased in bronze. Okay. And I'm going to put my hand out toward him. And I'm going to say, you should have taken the deal. And he's going to need to make a con- constitution saving throw at disadvantage for me, please, because he is a fiend. He is a fiend. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, baby. That is a 14. That is a fail. So as I cast Bolt of Glory, you see a giant ball of, I go like almost full Super Saiyan, and there's like a giant ball of radiant energy that just emanates out and it co- coalesces down at Neppy's arm and it just, she just fires it out at him. And that is fucking 10 d 10 radiant damage and you can suck it. Do it up. Oh god! The last damn it. time you used this, when the giant threw Callie. Yeah, I ripped yeah. it. I ripped a giant in half. Yeah, for when, Callie. Yeah, yeah, when Callie was thrown over a giant shoulder. Yep. Two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven. You need d tens. Yeah, oh, I, need, yeah. Ten. I do. I need ten of them, motherfuckers. Here you go. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> I can just get some d for you. I'm just going to roll this. Please oh, give me all of your good luck. We want all right, tens in here. Hold on, let me blow on them. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Chat, please blow too. We need some good luck. Kiss mine. mine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, here we go. We got it. That's good. That's good. There's lots of nines and tens in there. Okay, we got 10, 20. 29. When you look into a bar and everyone's hot. That's good. That's good. There's a lot of nines and tens in there. <laughs> 29. Um, that's this bar, man. Everybody's no. Hot. Everybody's half hot. The, half the people working there were wretches. <laughs> like, yeah, the, there's a hot. Spider-Man <laughs> playing. Spider-Man's the, here? 
Yeah, yeah Tom down, Holland down. is playing the fucking loot. Yeah, Guys, I can't, I can't help you anymore. No, it's not I'm Tom going Holland. Going over to Tom Holland. <laughs> you, you know, it's. Oh, gosh, I can't remember his name now. The one I'm talking about. McGuire. <laughs> yeah, you know that's the, this is the part where you. Tobert. <laughs> Tobert. <laughs> that's gonna be. Toby. Seventy-six <laughs> points of radiant damage. Nice. Very good. All right. Okay. Nice. All right. So yeah, you see, watch it blasts into his robe and just like singes into his skin, and you can see the like the robe kind of burns away, revealing the kind of like like thick green flesh underneath, kind of start to burn as well and singe. You see just like scowls and you can see all of his like very wide mouth just like scrunches together and all of his teeth are bared. And I'd probably just smile at him because he didn't take my fucking deal. (laughs) Yana, you're up. Yana. So I checked my spells and there's one thing that Yana could do right now. Uh, That doesn't require sight? doesn't require a sight it's just a creature within range uh he needs to make a dexterity saving throw <laughs> does this make him dance this... oh i wish i wish uh, but no i don't have that prepared uh, Brogy, that's you missed 20 me. not natural oh, he makes that's it that's worst. so sad nothing yeah. happens what were you trying to cast Odalux Resilient Sphere. Oh. I was just going to bowl him over. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> oh, dang. Um, oh, dang. I'm going to scoot backwards uh, <laughs> and try and find Neppy. Right. <laughs> like, ah, ah. <laughs> Get behind your cleric, folks. <laughs> All right. It is Callie's turn. Flying over to him. Like, okay. full force flying over this man's. Guys, I'm... I was not going to have a lot of high level spells left because we put her in a bar with a bunch of devils. Now she's fighting them. <laughs> but, the royal we put her in a bar with a bunch of devils. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all agreed to this that this we was a good did. idea. We did. We did. We it was, did. look, on Letters' <laughs> two places he wanted to go, it was this bar or the bar that all the interplanar farmers hang out at. And I think <laughs> we can all agree. I would have had a great time at the interplanar farmers and like getting tips on oats. But I feel like this one. Look, we're having a good time. Um, Fay oats, though. That's the real shit. <laughs> Foats. Oats. To- I needed to meet my middleman, Toke Mc. Toats Mc. Fuck. Toats Mc. Foats. Toats Mc. Foats. The Fay oats <laughs> dealer. Oh my god! Oh my god! You want that those Edru? It's gonna be. <laughs> Uh, plus, why is math so hard? But um, ninety, hundred, a hundred and ten points of damage. That'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Nice. That'll do it. <laughs> uh. What? Yeah. No. That. No, that's a charm, so it won't work. Because your mind blank can still be up, right? Mm-hmm. It's all day. Not yeah. concentration. It lasts 24 hours. Boom, boom. I don't even so have can't to be, be charmed, alive. Right? Can't be charmed. I won't use it then. All right, so yeah, how do you want to do it? She's just uh, flying over from the other ledge that she was on, and she's going to point at him. <laughs> I'm just going to fly over, and like fl- as she's flying, I just want to slice him in half. Okay, so you just like fly straight through him and you watch as you like come through, he kind of looks at you like, oh, this ain't over. <laughs> so you just like pull through him and you just watch his guts spill out and sizzle away on the floor uh, as he is dispatched. Um, the, the two bouncers that walked us up, <laughs> now that I'm over no. here, I just want to look at them with my bloody sword in hand. Okay, just, make an intimidation check at advantage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that's going to be uh, 19. 
19. They both kind of like stand there and sort of look at you and look at each other. Oh, wait, at advantage. Sorry. That's going to be <laughs> 22. Yeah, they look at each other and they look at you and they go, just leave. I need my stand friend. Back. Are we out of initiative? Uh, we can drop out of initiative, yeah. I need my it friend. is tense in the bar. There are other devils downstairs. It is oh. tense. I just killed. And we're, are are Kokian, Kokni and I still blind? Uh, no, you are not blind anymore. I'm going to walk over to the edge. Okay. And he, like hearing that those um, bouncers just growled at Callie to just leave. Mm-hmm. In Infernal. I'm going to say... You bring me my fucking friend back and I will get the fuck out of this bar. You watch as one of the, uh, the waiters you saw from downstairs fly up with her sort of um, bat wings and she kind of looks at you like, well, you killed the only guy who could do that. Just get the fuck out. You watch- What the hell? <laughs> You watch Clack go, we can't just leave him in there. I... We're all going in the pit. <laughs> <laughs> I told the Garisto to bring him back. I'm going to speak to the woman in front of me. Is the pit one way? I don't know. I've never seen anyone come out of the pit. Does it suck you in? Or does it just sit there? No, you gotta go in. Tim, I'm I will have before all of this when I got my sight back have dropped um spirit guardians, so I haven't killed everybody. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna look at everyone. Mm. I'm literally the only person who can get letters out. In the pit we go. All of us. I mean, yeah, yeah, obviously. You're not going in there alone. All right. Let's go. Way ahead of you. And you watch Clack <laughs> leap off the balcony. Ah! Clack! Clack! Hop into the pit. Yeah, we're all in the pit. And that's where we're going to end it tonight. Oh, oh no! no. Damn, I could have got myself out of the pit in the time you spent talking. I'm already at the levers. I'm pulling in. Portals are opening. Things from different dimensions are coming in. You didn't have to jump in the pit. Ah. Uh-huh. We... <laughs> Being the of green straw, jump in the pit. A, a buddy cop we... comedy. Yeah, we end as, as all of you are falling <laughs> towards the pit. Plane shifting ourselves. We've really. <laughs> <laughs> Plane shift yourself. Or Rika's like, oh, wait. Uh. She doesn't go in. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jump super no. fine. Oh, that's super sweet. fine. That's a dumb idea. She's kind of no. laid back this whole time. She's yes, like, good. As she idea. should. <laughs> Another one of those, I live here. <laughs> I live here. Um, thanks oh, to everyone for oh, hanging out with us tonight as we truly so go tonight. cause a ruckus in sigil. Oh. I took prompt- a left turn. I, I like that. <laughs> Second, we get home to the material plane. I am giving Adonis his totem and never going back unless I need to. Um, thank you so much for everyone to hang, for hanging out with us tonight. Um, please come hang out with us on Monday for Chatwater as myself and Yanis and Sean uh, debrief that cluster cuss. And uh, I feel like we have to talk about the 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 fae <laughs> buffet arc at this point since Absolutely. we referenced it in this episode. Absolutely. We will probably get started with the Fey Wild Arc since we definitely, definitely talked about it in this session. Um, and then we'll maybe save some RPG theory for next week or the week after. But please come hang out with us 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Monday. Uh, next Wednesday we are off and then we will be back on Saturday as we literally get out of hell. Um, so we love y'all. Uh, careful because your friends might go into a demon bar and then this kind of stuff happens. So <laughs> be safe. Love you guys. Good night. <laughs>